everybody, and welcome to another edition of our complete set review of Guilds of Ravnica. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Aaron Campbell. And I'm Ruben Bressler. And we're here to talk about all the blue and Demir cards in the set. It's going to be awesome. This set is pretty fantastic. It's time to talk about blue cards getting clever, getting cute, countering yeah. spells, bouncing things. Let's start off. Dimmer in particular feels like it's very pushed. Like and Dimmer, central to the story. Yeah, I mean, we had Transmute, which was cute, and then we had Cypher, which no one really knew what Garbage. it did, but yeah. this is, they've really come a long way. Yeah, yeah Cypher was bad. Like it's Cypher was the worst, and it seems like Surveil might be the best. Yeah, yeah, it's really been fantastic. But we'll start here with Capture Sphere. For a blue and three generic mana, it is a common enchantment aura with Flash, Enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, you tap enchanted creature, and enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is water knot. This is a million different flavors yeah. of this card. This one in particular is a little bit more expensive, but you get the flash out of it. Yeah, it's, so you can get the haste creature. Yeah, it's premium blue removal. This is the card that pushes you into blue if you see this come third or fourth pick. Yeah. Uh, and it's always playable and limited, and you'll never see it constructed ever. Yeah. Yeah, really solid limited removal. I'm happy to play upwards. Of, I mean, depending on what my curve looks like, I'd be happy to play three. Sure. Like, this is just really solid good removal from blue. Right. Now, this is about as good as you're going to get from blue in terms of that. Doesn't shut off Aurelia entirely. Doesn't shut off some of the big expensive, like, Underrealm Lich. Some of the effects you'll still get, but it is going to prevent you from getting attacked by any of those big scary monsters. Right. So, so not necessarily a first pick, like, Windmill Slam or anything, no. but this is the removal spells you want when you're in the blue base decks. Yep. Certainly a signal. Yeah. Chemistry's Insight is next, and we have a very special guest. Let's see who it is. Hello, I am AJ Soccer. Obviously, the card most people are talking about from Guilds of Ravnica is Assassin's Trophy. That makes sense. That card is insane, and I do really like it, and I'm looking forward to seeing kind of how it affects the different formats. You know, it's going to be a multi-format all-star. Um, but I like, I like that one. I like pretty much all of the split cards. Uh, but my favorite cards are generally the more like bread and butter type cards. The cards that might be less splashy, uh, you know, than big bomb rares. But they kind of make magic go, make the magic machine uh, work. Things like District Guide and Sinister Sabotage. So my favorite card, the card I'm most looking forward to playing with from Gills of Ravnica is Chemister's Insight. Uh, it's a pretty boring card, but it does a lot. Uh, it's it's basically just a one card engine, um, and it plays great with a lot of really strong things that you already want to be doing. Uh, Teferi, you know, those two just obviously go in the same deck. Plays great with Settle the Wreckage and Counter Magic, like the aforementioned Sinister Sabotage. So yeah, Chemister's Insight. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you very much, AJ, for hanging out and being a special guest on the show. This uh, is a very AJ soccer card. Yeah, sure. AJ's known for writing an entire guide on how to brainstorm. So yeah. if you want to learn how to brainstorm in Legacy or, or Vintage, you definitely go look up his primer. Yeah. Nice. Ready to draw cards and do things. Uh, Chemistry's Insight is a blue and three generic mana for an uncommon instant that draws two cards, and it has Jumpstart. This is our first card with Jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs, then exile this card. So... Uh, there's a three mana sorcery shock that no one would ever be excited about unless you can play it twice. Right. And no matter what you draw, you can play it. This isn't uh, like retrace where you have the discard lands. This is discard anything to get this effect again. Yeah, this is sort of our glimmer of genius. You know, that was the glue that kind of held the blue decks together uh, in the standard it's about to rotate. And this kind of fits really cleanly into that role. You know, you still get to draw two cards and then later on you get to draw an additional two cards. And so that's really, really good. I expect if there is any sort of control deck or blue mid-range deck, this is definitely going in there. Absolutely. And the fact that you draw the two this this feeds itself mm -hmm. right. uh, is another big thing some of the jumpstart cards aren't card advantage engines this one one of the two cards but especially in game one for maybe you're drawing a removal spell that you don't need against a other control deck you can discard your path to exile or whatever equivalent of that you have mm -hmm. to draw two more cards or if you have too many lands in play you can do the retrace mode and discard the land to reget it um, you know, just a very good, very solid card. I expect us to see a lot of competitive standard play. I mean, if if Hieroglyphic Illumination <laughs> saw standard play, yeah. now, of course, that one was a split card of, of cycling, draw one, pay four, draw two. Uh, yeah. This one, though, is the Glimmer of Genius replacement 100%. Just a very, very, very good card. Yeah, this is, this is to me, like, it, it, it both fuels itself, it provides card advantage. You're giving up one card to be up a card, you're giving up another card, no matter what it is, to be up another card. So, like, the ability to kind of chain these together, if you have multiple yeah. of these and, and limited, 
fantastic. Yeah. Like that is terrific into your turn. I get to do this into your turn. I get to most likely discard a land yeah. to do it again. In like, limited, this will be much better in the in the aggro slanted decks. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine in controlish strategies, but you probably want to be getting your card draw off of things that are also impacting the board. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a, a think twice equivalent that we'll talk about later with Jumpstart. Mm -hmm. That's probably better in the control archetypes because you want to be uh, lower to the ground on your mana requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but Chemister's Insight, I, I like this as like two drop, three drop, refill your hand, play some more creatures, refill your hand again. Right. Um, uh, much, much better in the tempo strategies. Also, best split card in the set is bread and butter. Shout out to AJ for the bread and butter. <laughs> hey -o. There we did it. Got there. Well done. All right. So City Watch Sphinx is next. It's a blue and five generic mana for an uncommon 5-4 Sphinx that has flying. And when it dies, you surveil two. This is also our first instance of surveil. Yeah. Surveil says, look at the top two cards of your library, or the top X cards, whatever the number is. Uh, the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top in any order. It has been incredible. Surveil is bananas. Tour, surveil is week. scry with upside. Yeah. And scry is very good. Yeah, um, I've played a lot of Horizon Scholars uh, in my day. I mm -hmm. first picked Horizon Scholar, which is a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6 that scries for 2 when it enters the battlefield. This is very similar. Uh, an extra power, and it's a dies trigger instead, so you don't get the value immediately. But, um, but 5 power flyer for 6 is Dragon Stats. It has card uh, uh, um, filtering built into it. Just a very, very, very good card. I would not be unhappy to first pick this card first pack. When two-fifths of your mechanics for the set involve things in the graveyard, mm -hmm. Surveil is amazing. And to be able to see Surveil happen and just dig through your deck to get you to more, better, stronger things, like yeah. that's what was happening. Is they'd be like, oh, cool, I don't don't need these two lands, but I'm going to put this creature back on top. Right. And then there's other cards that trigger off Surveil, and they were getting counters and bonuses and triggers and whatever. Like, it is incredibly synergistic with both, uh, was it Undergrowth? Undergrowth. Undergrowth, and, and of course Jumpstart. Jumpstart. So, like, it is the perfect mechanic to live with those mechanics. Yeah. So, uh, Surveil, I think, is 100% constructed ready. I think they pushed it. We'll definitely see in black when I post it the moment. It's fine. But this guy, again, six mana, five power, fantastic. Just like Cloud Reader Sphinx yeah. and Dominaria, five mana, three, four that scribed to. This surveils to when it dies. Uh, that card was uh, famously quoted uh, Owen Turtmold as uh, buttery smooth. And uh, I like that. I, always, always I like buttery, that. buttery smooth is nice. Buttery smooth is good. Quick flavor update. Sphinxes are way more common on Ravnica than any fantasy world I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, there's Bell Tower Sphinx at Uncommon in, in original Ravnica. There's City Watch Sphinx, or maybe it was Return There was Ravnica. a few in Alara. There was a few in Alara, but certainly not as numerous or as uh, obvious in public mm. as the Sphinxes. Similarly with the Gorgons, they're just Gorgons walking around in Ravnica, whereas the, that would be like a rare thing to see in any other plane of existence in magic or beyond. Mm -hmm. um, the the zoology and biology of Ravnica is very fascinating to me. Sphinxes in particular uh, being a major part of both the Azorius and the Demir uh, mm -hmm. guilds. Just, just super interesting. Very nice. Dazzling Lights is up next. It's one blue mana for a common instant. Target creature gets minus three, minus zero until end of turn, and you surveil two. Give him the old razzle-dazzle. Razzle-dazzle. As it were, uh, this is a card that's that's fine. This is a card that gets way better because there are things that care about surveilling. Right. It's not that the effect is that good. It's that oh sweet, this card gets a counter, and this card gets a bonus, and this card gets an ability, right. and whatever. Because you're surveilling, uh, you're also of course again probably negating whatever is attacking, right. i.e., gaining that much life and figuring out what you're going to do to solve that problem, like shrink that creature. Right. Oh, cool, this guy's going to block him next turn, and this thing's terrible, so let's put it in the graveyard. Not the greatest instance of this ability, but certainly if you're playing a blue-white deck that has Mentor, mm -hmm. perhaps you target your own creature, then Surveil to filter. Not the I mean, it's a little bit corner case, but it is something. Um, and for your, your one-mana Surveil 2, you want it to be able to do something else. So right. and that, that's the, those, those are the types of sort of clever plays that a lot of people don't really right. care enough to think about. They're like, well, this is the only way I use this card, right. is to shrink your opponent's creature. Dizzy like, Spell typically doesn't see competitive play doesn't see draft play like maybe you'd run one of the minus three minus oh style effect and you know sensory deprivation style and you'd be upset that you had to play it right now you're like oh cool. now you're like okay surveil. at least it you know right i got all these other things that care about surveil which means this card is better right if you don't have those things this card is terrible yeah i mean just it's not terrible it's just it's not good not good it's like a like a two out of ten instead of a one out of ten because of the surveil right 
Devious Cover-Up is next. A 2 blue, 2 generic mana, common instant counter-target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it in its owner's graveyard. You may shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. I really like this. You know, as somebody who's known for putting things in the graveyard, sometimes things end up there that you wish you could take back. You know, let's say you surveilled and at the time you didn't need something, so you binned it, and then so many turns later you're like, I could have really used that thing I binned. Well, this is a way to shuffle it back into your graveyard. Um, this is also a way to, you know, possibly preempt any sort of graveyard hate. Just be like, okay, I'm going to counter this, and I have a feeling there's something coming, so whoop, 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 I'm going to prevent all of that. Or just to reset. You know, let's say you did the Narc Amoeba thing, your Narc Amoebas are dead, which we'll talk about Narc Amoeba later. Put them back in your library and do it all over again. I really like this. This card worries me. Because <laughs> if, the, if this card is good in standard, that's miserable for magic. Because when this card is good in standard, that means that we're going through our entire library multiple times. That means I'm playing standard. <laughs> <laughs> this card, first of all, I love this card in, in Limited because anytime I'm able to reshuffle my grave, like, I am the world's biggest Gaia's Blessing, Mending of Dominaria, like, apologist. Like, Elixir of Immortality in Limited is my jam. It is, I just, I love, I love me that effect. And if I have two devious cover-ups in Limited, I get to cycle those through each other, which is great. Um... If this card is good in standard, it is not good for magic. It's also important to note that the spell get, that gets countered is exiled as well. Yes. Yeah, good which point. Came, which may matter if you uh, counter their jumpstart spell yep. or a creature that's what they want to counter growth, growth yeah. later. Um, I'm of the opinion this card's not that good, but I'm happy to be surprised and or proven wrong. I, I, think, there's a, I think there's like a 50% chance that this is like constructed playable. And if it is constructed playable and that deck is good, that's a problem. Is, is what I just, I, is, I'm just worried. I'm just it's worried. <laughs> I, just, I, I mean, I think I would put it at like 10% chance to make it anywhere close to a slide board. Okay. But either way, it's it's, it's a fine card. Yeah. It's a middling, middle of the road. Don't pick it early. It's fine. Don't worry yeah. about getting it late. Yeah, it's don't fine. pick it early, certainly. Lord, no. Four mana counter spells are not good and limited. Usually. Uh, Bone to Ash was fairly good. It was fine. But you drew a card. Right. Uh, Demir Informant is next. It's a blue and two generic mana for a 1-4 common human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, surveil two. So this is the wall. This is the early play to kind of get... Horn Turtles of... are my jam in limited. <laughs> one yeah. fours for two. I'm like a huge Sailor of Means guy. Mm -hmm. Demir Informant is card filtering as well. Um, surveil two is very similar to Scry two, and I love Omen Speaker, and I love Cloud Reader Sphinx, and that sort of effect. Putting it on a creature with four toughness in a really in a format that has both Mentor and one ones. Are you telling me this thing is buttery smooth? It's buttery smooth. Oh yeah, it, it gets the, the BS award um, <laughs> because Demir Inform in and of itself was doing fantastic work at the pre pre release again. Just kind of just fueled you forward, right? This is your three drop, and you need a four drop. Yeah. Like oh. There's my four drop, yeah. and this is crap. Let's put it in the bin. Like it just it kept feeding itself, and I was just really impressed by how it played. The surveil cards that are able to feed themselves is, are are fantastic. The more demure informants you have, the better your your deck draws out. Right. You can cycle them into each other if you want to go demure informant into more one fours, mm -hmm. or you can draw into your citywide sphinx or stuff like that. Right. This is the card that stops Boros. This is the card where you're like, all right, Boros, that was cute. Let's just chill out for a minute. Your, th your a three bit. one is adorable, but let's <laughs> let's slow your roll. Yeah, exactly. So uh, again, this is a card that's sort of it's part of that very sort of control oriented archetype, and your awesome Demir Surveil fuel, fuel deck. This is the card that you want, and it's it's really good. I, I was impressed. Yeah, for a horn turtle. Disdainful Stroke is back. Yeah. It's a red, I'm sorry, it's a blue and a generic mana for a common instant counter target spell will convert a mana cost four or greater. This saw serious constructed play back in the day. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's a, well, it saw constructed play as a result of Siege Rhino being the most popular card in the format, uh, and also because Delve was in the format. So sure. if cost reduction affects things like Convoke, become very powerful in the standard environment, mm -hmm. so will Disdainful Stroke. But it's not a it's not a card that you just play willy-nilly no. first week. It's a sideboard card. It's a sideboard card at the, at best in week one. Sure. Um, there might not even be a reason to... I mean, I guess you counter Teferi with this card in the mirror. That's pretty darn good. Counter Teferi, you counter that crazy Convoke uh, token maker thing we'll get to in Celestia. Sure. Like, there's a lot of really yeah, good threats. On the on stops. the play in the blue white mirror, if you go Teferi on tap two lands, counter your Teferi with a disdainful stroke. If you're not playing negate already, that's GG. pretty darn good. Yeah, that's a good thing. So this is very situational. This isn't a card that you really pick and draft unless you get it super late. Yeah. You don't sideboard I mean, it in unless they have a lot of good threats against it. I wouldn't be unhappy playing one. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Like it's like playing an essence scatter or uh, you know. I mean, essence scatter is way better. I mean, in draft, they're they're right. pretty similar. 
I mean, uh, the blue white deck in standard didn't leave home without essence scatter. Like yeah. It was main deck. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. So, well, I mean, in standard, you have things that are, you have a much higher chance of having a good aggro yeah. curve. Right. Um, you know, whereas, you know, things like four mana, two, three flyers are much more reasonable in draft. I think the way I put it is that I feel like this is almost un main deckable in draft, but it is good in seal. Yes. Because in seal, you're, you're going to run into the four plus mana stuff that they're going to want to slam down. Absolutely. And you go, no thanks. Even, even the aggressive Boros kind of decks are going to have that. Yeah, they're going to have something at four to five mana. All right, Dream Eater is next. Because I'm a dream eater. See, I was going the opposite direction. Women through the night. Ooh, ooh. See, I went in the Mariah Carey direction of Dream Eater, come rescue me. Mm-hmm. Do you have a song as well? Seven. It's karaoke night here Y'all are... during the Demir set review. <laughs> We've properly dorked up this card. Um... <laughs> Dream Eater is a two blue and four generic mana for a mythic 4-3 Nightmare Sphinx that has Flash and Flying. And when it enters the battlefield, remember you do this in order, you surveil four. And when you do, you may return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So you look at the top four, put any number on top or in the graveyard, and then you bounce a non-land permanent they control at instant speed at the end of their term. If you so like to, this is probably bananas. The yeah. card is really, really good. Four power flash flyer. It's just uh, expensive. S- surveil four. Four is a massive number. Four is huge. Uh, three toughness is a low. Is low. Um, but anything that ails you though, any yeah. any non land permanent that's planeswalkers, that's yeah. artifacts, that's enchantments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, man, this is one of those cards that I Instant felt... speed flying aether snipe is nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's 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 good. It's very very good. I was just like, is it that good? Like they gave this to Star City. This is Star City Games as a preview. Normally sure. they give the best constructed stuff to Star City and cool stuff and sure. uh, Channel Fireball. And so I was. I like, don't think this will be a control finisher in the way that you know. Uh, we already have things like Chromium. We have yeah, this, we had Torrential Gear Hulk recently. Yeah, this seems more of a mid range. You know, we yeah. saw people kind of playing around with black blue mid range and standard. And this mm-hmm. is something that seems kind of mid rangey to me. Yeah, yeah. This this is Angler Drake. I mean, it's very similar to Angler Drake. It has Flash. Obviously, has a lower toughness. And uh, instead of being able to j- only bounce a creature, you can bounce anything. Oh, by the way, surveil a billion. Um, so yeah, it's it is it is better than that. But that three toughness, man. I don't know if there's going to be a lightning strike still or another lightning strike that is going to be constructed playable, but uh, yeah. I mean, lightning strike is in Ixalan, yeah. so it's I mean, a, a thing. A braid is going away, right? so that's a plus in the Dream Eater column. I just, I, I, this to me, I have the feeling that it was a 4-4 and play design was just like, let's just, let's no. tweak that a little bit. That's a little too good at 4 toughness. Also, hey, Wedge, another nightmare for your World Gorger Dragon <laughs> tribal. No. Uh, nightmare tribal? Very nice. But uh, in limited, this thing is insane. Yeah. This is oh, yeah. the easy first, first pick. pick. Snap. Easy, always play in your sealed decks. This thing is terrific. It's just like we're talking about standard, essentially. Yeah. Drown Secrets is next. It's a blue and generic mana for a rare enchantment. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. We still have the, um, from M19, there's the blue, oh god, it's an enchantment. Psychic Summer. Yeah, we still have that. So between this and this, I mean, if you can have enough blue spells, you could play. You know, there are those people who love themselves a mill deck. You know, we have a couple in our Patreon Discord who, yeah. you know, they will look for any reason to play a mill deck, whether it be in modern or whatever. And there right. there are pieces here to, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk about Dimir kind of milling you, but there's just as many tools to mill someone else. And so I'm really excited to see what someone's going to come up with. Because I played I played the um, the Pyromancer's Goggles, Sphinx's Tutelage. I've done that, and I, I have no shame. In particularly, in particular, good with Jumpstart, because you get to you know, two scoops. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it, people love mill. The, the, the thing about mill is that it's very similar to a burn strategy, where mm-hmm. your opponent starts at 40 life, or 33 life, and limited. As opposed to starting at 20 and you can't target creatures, but you, your burn spells deal five to their library. Or whatever, and you can right? still target yourself. So yes. if you do want to turn it on yourself, and like you said, sort of the live the dream, the network amoebas and the chills, just yep. boop, boop, boop. Yeah. I mean, this is the type of card that's usually very bad in sealed because you just don't have enough ways to trigger it. Mm-hmm. But if this is your first pack, first pick, and you're like, you know what? We might be doing it. There's yeah. a couple different meal cards in this in this sure. set. It triggers off of any blue spell. Yeah. So any blue spell you got, if this is if this is your turn to play. And I am your opponent, I would be afraid. I would be like, oh God, 
You, what is what has happened? What is going on? You, yeah. you have a ton of blue stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not just instants or sorceries. It's any blue spell. We've also seen, and, and we'll certainly talk about this later, there's been a mono blue tempo deck uh, kind of making its way in standard. I think Ken Yakiro yeah. played it. You know, it costs like $50 to build. It's a tier one deck. Yeah. And I mean, if, if creatures don't get there, because it is made up of mostly little creatures, right. just play this and, all right, fine. If I'm not going to kill you with damage, I'm just going to cast things. And curious obsession to keep refilling your hand, and I'll get you one way or another. <laughs> right. All right. We want here to enhance surveillance, of which we have a special guest. Let's check it out. Hey, Aaron, Evan, and Ruben. This is Zach, one of your loyal patrons, and I'm happy to be here to talk about a card from Guilds of Ravnica. The card I chose to talk about is Enhanced Surveillance. Enhanced Surveillance is one generic mana and one blue mana for an uncommon enchantment that reads, you may look at an additional two cards each time you surveil and Exile and Enhanced Surveillance shuffle your graveyard into your library. Surveil is the type of effect that can make games go exactly as you want to when you surveil. By setting up your draws, you can shape the game the way you want. Scry can do this as well, but we never really saw the Scry number get too large. Enhanced Surveillance bumps all the Surveil cards up to a higher level. Imagine if Dissolve had Scry 3 on it instead of Scry 1. Well, that's the kind of situation that can happen with Enhanced Surveillance. The cards with even larger surveil numbers on its face get closer to having contingency plans or Tygum schemings attached to them in addition to effects you already want or creatures you may already want. And that's not taking into account that this effect can stack in multiples. If you have two of these, you add an additional surveil four onto each effect. I'm excited to try this out, and I'll end my video by pointing out how Surveil was previously tried out in some previous sets without the keyword, um, and give some evidence of how powerful this kind of effect can be. These cards don't work with Enhanced Surveillance, but they are interesting anyway. Remember Sultai Ascendancy? Yeah, that's just Surveil 2 every upkeep, but it didn't really go anywhere. It didn't have any other abilities on it. What about Naga Oracle? Surveil 3 on a creature. All right, this is getting closer to a good card, but it's only a common. But remember Grimflare or Search for a Scanta. They're surveil effects before surveil existed, and these are really good cards. I'm not necessarily saying enhanced surveillance will make surveil cards as good as Grimflare, but those cards will be much closer when it's on the battlefield. I think it's at least worth trying, and I hope you do too. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the set review. Bye. Yeah, so Zach brings up an interesting point when you compare Scry to Surveil. One of the awkward things about Scry is like, so let's say you would have like a Scry 5, you'd look at the top one and be like, well, I like this card, we're, we're good. And like, there'd just be, you know, the, your, your other four Scrys are basically wasted. But right. it's my understanding that if you have Surveil 5, you look at all five yes. and you're like, okay, I like this, I like this. You're getting so much more out of it than you would if you were scrying. And so right. this is really good. You know, you look at Dream Eater, Dream Eater becomes a Surveil 6. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, like this allows there. you to really sculpt, you know, your hand and your plays. And Ruben mentioned really liking the the elixir of immortalities, where you just want to keep the game going. Like, all right, you've milled all these things. I'm, you know, we're not. I'm going to have a hard time not first picking this card. Yeah, oh <laughs> because I'm the kind of dude where I just fall in love with a certain type of card, and like I, I, I pick. Like I said, I pick Gaia's Blessings early. I pick Elixirs of Immortality early. I fall in love with an archetype. My most recent love has been Gift of Paradise decks in Amonkhet Draft okay. and in Corset. Mm -hmm. um, even though that card is not great, I just fall in love with it. And I'm like, I love this deck, so I'm going to pick this card in the hopes that I can draft this deck. That's the kind of card that Enhanced Surveillance is. I just love me. Well, well, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Zach. We appreciate oh, yeah. it your patronage you. and whatnot and support of the Kickstarter. Um, enhanced surveillance itself is awesome because it does stack, like you mentioned. Yeah. It's like, you can have multiples of this and it's not like total garbage. Yes, it requires an enabler, but when those enablers happen, it's it, it's on 11. You crank yeah. it to 11. It also does something if you're not surveilling, which I appreciate. Yeah. Yes, it's minor, it's kind of silly, but at least it's something. Pair with your own secrets though. So it's like, you know, so you- Mill yourself and, yeah, and get so you your- you get the blue for the surveil, then you mill yourself and then you just- And, and then you shuffle all of the, the wheat back into your deck yeah. and leave the chaff in the graveyard. Yeah. Ooh, from the wheat, the, the wheat and the chaff to make the bread for your bread and butter to make it buttery smooth. <laughs> But then you have to make that was ice. my that was my combo that I assembled. Do 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 yeah. mondo combo got there. All right, but otherwise this is like 
Yeah, this is the card for that one the, for the surveil player. This is the card that if you are the surveil player, you'll get this like seventh, eighth pick. Yeah. Not even, you might be able to table on I it. do find it funny that they gave this to Demir. They, they've given Demir better <clears throat> tools to mill themselves than they gave Golgari. I'm just getting that out of the way now. Like, Golgari would have killed we'll get, for this we'll card. We'll get to the black cards that surveil in a we minute. Will. And they're good too. <laughs> they're all good cards. Yes. Guild Summon is next. This Rip. is this is definitely Ruben's yes. imitational card. Yes, 100%. Uh, <laughs> I will be first picking this card every time I open it in a, in a first pack. It's a blue and two generic mana, uncommon enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you may tap any number of untapped gates you control. Draw a card for each gate tapped this way. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Woo! Woo! Oh, man, it's getting hot. It's getting cray up in here. Mm. They know the way to my heart. Because you're going to play a second one, then you're going to play a gate and draw two cards. Woo! Oh, I love God. the irony here that I know you as being such a mono-red sort of burn player, and yet you also get excited for lands that come into play death. Yeah. There's a dichotomy there. In limited. I get, I, get my, I get my giggles out and constructed with my one drop, two drop, three drop aggro, and then in limited, I'm all about just every come into play tapped. Okay. You know, just play cons limited in formats <laughs> that aren't cons limited. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is this is the card they made to enable the gate deck. Yeah. This is another one just like the red white creature, which was which is you're gonna have a bunch of colors doing a bunch of crazy silly stuff. Let's give you something that makes it pay off, and this makes it pay off. And spoiler alert, you get to see how well the guild summit went on Assassin's Trophy. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out. Yeah, That's it's so interesting great. that they didn't number the story spoilers uh, cards anymore. This one ha obviously does not have the Demir watermark or the uh, is it watermark, but instead has the Planeswalker. The Planeswalker watermark to be able to tell the story right uh and then it, they, they got rid of the ordering to not spoil the story but then spoiled the story kind of with another what right of the cards yeah. assassin's Trophy. if only someone's head hadn't got lopped off in another card we wouldn't have known what happened leapfrog is oh up next God. one of the cutest this cards. is adorable this is from our awe from the subreddit awe uh blue and two generic mana for a three one common frog it has flying as long as you've played an instant or sorcery spell this turn hmm. that's pretty cool this speaks to the biodiversity of ravnica frogs are not exactly city uh, uh city dwellers like usually you got squirrels you got birds of some kind maybe in african nations you got like primates very rarely do you have amphibians this this means that ravnica is a pretty uh well, Water-based place. This is a pretty... Uh... Well, first of all, yeah. Second of all, uh, Orlando, there's frogs. Okay, Orlando. There's, frogs. there's city. There's city frogs in Orlando? Oh, there's All right, so Ravnica's frogs. got a bit of humidity. Mm -hmm. If you like Orlando in the summertime, then you'll love... Actually, Orlando in autumn. In the autumn. In autumn is nice, mm -hmm. I'm sure. It is nice, actually. We don't have the, 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 the scale leaves flying by, or do we? Do we have scale leaves? Nope. Doesn't we don't have... Like we it. have scale streets down there. We have scale streets. Yeah, yeah that's all we got. But a three mana three one... By itself, eh. but it gains flying when you play an instant or sorcery, so you can play your surveil draw card kind of cards. Three power for three mana in blue is you know pretty darn good. It's pretty good for for what it is. It's just one of those that you know it feels like a weird sort of almost chump blocker to try to take down larger creatures sure. if you're getting ran over by the boros. Maybe there's a spell heavy deck that can get you there. Maybe I mean, jump start lets you play a bunch of cards over again. Two yeah, two for ones. So. Absolutely. So given this creature flying is very powerful. If you can make it work. The Jumpstart deck feels like this is the yeah. card it wants. Maximize Altitude. For one blue mana, it's a common sorcery. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains fly until in a turn. Or you may jumpstart it. Which, again, you may cast it from your graveyard, but it's card in a card in addition to paying its other costs, and then exile it. You know, back in the day, there was a card called Jump. Yeah. And you used to pay one blue mana just for flying. Flying. You don't get no bonus. You just get to fly. And you didn't get to cast it twice. No, there's no there's no retracing. Remember they gave us that one? Like they've they've sliced and diced the giving a thing flying, whatever. And now it's like, well, we can give you flying, but we also have to give you plus one plus one yeah. to make it matter. Yeah. See, she's already fallen. <laughs> so, oh, whatever, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, excuse me. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you Is that play a magic card? <clears throat> you play your fresh faced recruit on turn two, you play your leapfrog on turn three, then on turn four you maximize altitude, you recruit, attack for six in the air. It's nothing to sneeze at. There you go. I mean, this is just not a very exciting card. It's not. There's it's not. it has it has an archetype. There is an archetype. Again, we just saw leapfrog. This was the type of card perfect yeah. for that one. We want here to mission briefing, oh, of no. which we have a very special guest. Hello, Magic Mikes. This is Jonathan Medina, and today we're going to talk about a card called Mission Briefing. Now, 
there are so many cards that I'm excited about out of Guilds of Ravnica, cards I want to put in my EDH decks, cards I want to put in my battle box, but I think this card demonstrates something that every Magic player should remember, and that is the price decay that happens from spoiler season into peak supply. That's when everyone's drafting it and it's everyone's busting their boxes open and uh, supply of all the cards from this set are available. Now, I think that what's going to happen, this card is pre-selling right now between $8.50 and $15. I think what's going to happen is this is going to be a $2 or $3 card at peak supply. Now, why do I think that? Let's talk about it. It's not because of the playability of the card. Now, the card itself is a great card. It's playable. I think it's it's no Snapcaster Mage, but I'm sure you have plenty of pros and other illuminaries talking about the card itself and its merits and, and whatnot. There are a lot of play scenarios where this card is good. Uh, you could put it on an Isochron Scepter. Now, that might not be good, but it's exciting. <laughs> you can flash back a Cyclonic Rift. Uh, you can flash back a Force of Will or Played in Legacy in the blue-red uh, Prowlish deck, you know. You could do lots of different things with the card. So it's not the playability that makes this card a target to be 2 or $3. What it is is that a Magic set can only contain so much value. Now, a lot of that value is often soaked up by the Mythics. So Planeswalkers like Veraska and stuff like that will carry a lot of the value because they're more rare and harder to get than the rare cards and the rare cards typically get washed out in value there's not a lot of rare cards that are over ten dollars now if you look at sets like look at dominaria right where you have something like goblin chain whirler which was uber played in standard it's even seen a little bit of play in legacy and modern and that card is not five dollars right now i think it's maybe four dollars three dollars three fifty or something like that uh, but it's 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 played so again not the playability what we have to understand is these sets these magic sets these days are open so much that there's so much supply and what's going to happen with this card is there's going to be a lot of supply when when all of the cards are get opened and then that's when the playability will come in when the demand is is starting to be developed so will this card find a place in different decks if it does will that demand uh, soak up that supply that is the question and it may go up from that point right so it's gonna hit two or three dollars I believe uh, right now it has to compete with the other rares in the set now we all know about assassins trophy right that's uh that's one of the high dollar cards that card is better than this card in my opinion and so it's gonna it's gonna hold a higher premium it's gonna hold more of the value of the set and then you have shock lands which are universally used in cubes in uh, even Legacy now with with Reanimator, you know it's they're used in Modern and now they're going to be used in Standard. So the Shocklands also being at the rare slot will push the value of other rares down because they'll be holding uh, a brunt of that value. And so uh, we can see we can expect to see this go down to two or three dollars. Uh, the card itself is really neat. I like it. It's definitely going in the battle box alongside Snapcaster Mage. Uh, do I believe this card is as good as Snapcaster Mage? No, I do not. Uh, I don't know if you can find anyone who believes that, but if you do, that'll be really cool to get them on the show. Uh, those are my thoughts about this card, and I hope you enjoyed the financial bend. I'm, I'm sure that other people are going to talk about the playability and the viability of this card. So I appreciate you having me on the show, and I hope you all have an awesome time uh, drafting Guilds of Ravnica and, and playing with the new toys that Wizards of the Coast have given us. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. Wow. Well, thank you very much, John Medina himself. Taking him to school. Yeah. Ooh, we have been to the financial school, ladies and gentlemen, which means you should not be pre-ordering this card. So I think this card's a trap. I, I've seen a lot of excitement about this card, and I think Craig Lesko uh, brought it up really eloquently when he compared it to Eternal Witness. And, you know, there are a lot of regrowth effects out there that we see, and even a couple in this set, but what, nobody plays them. And right. what really separates a, a regrowth effect from Eternal Witness is the body, it's the body that can be manipulated. 
mostly mostly irrelevant body. Yeah, yeah, the body that can be manipulated, it can be bounced, it can be brought back from the graveyard. You know, that's what makes those cards so good. And while this does a, a reasonable Snapcaster impression, I think the lack of a body is really what kind of devalues this. And so I, I think the fact that it's not on a creature really does make a difference. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Mission Briefing is too blue for a rare instant that says Surveil 2. Then choose an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. If that card will be put in your graveyard this turn, you exile it instead. So the effect in and of itself looks, sounds, smells, if you will, yeah. powerful. But Recollect versus Eternal Witness, because Magic has done nothing but gotten more and more creature-centric, creature-focused, creature abilities, and creatures being awesome, you want it to be on creatures because right. those are the cards that they make that let you manipulate this ability the most. Because what happened with Snapcaster was because it's a creature, all these crazy things happened over the years and it became that much more good and that much more powerful. This just isn't it. However, cute side note, uh, one of the owners of CoolStuffInc.com collects original art. Mm. And he got this one. Nice. Oh, wow. Good one. I mean, even Torrential Gear Hulk, it's like what people forget about cards like Snapcaster and Gear Hulk is that not only do you get the bounce effect, but there are ways to close out games yeah. where, yeah, you're going to surveil this and get your you know, your jumpstart draw to you back, but it's like... But you can't kill your opponent. Right, you still got to win the game. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you were the one who had Snapcaster as your number one control finisher yeah. in, in one of our top tens. And... There are so many games that just end with a 2-1 attacking mm -hmm. you for the rest of the game. Mission Briefing can't do that. Yeah. And so uh, it's a big deal. One thing I will note, though, that I love about the flavor of the Demir is this extension of the noir setting, them being sort of the private investigators, the Eddie Valiants, the Sam Spades of like right. digging deeper into the the lore and the and the the uh, the smoky back rooms and the foggy street lamps, and I love that setting that they sort of <laughs> built. With and the, this card is cool. It is very unique in a lot of ways yeah. because you can play this and you can remove a blue card from your hand and pay a life and, and play and Force of Will Force out of will. your graveyard. That's you can't do that with Snapcaster Mage. You, know, you can delve are, with this with Treasure Cruiser dig through time or, or other cards like that right um you can fire blast you i mean you can do any of the uh, alternate cost stuff right and so again if you have delve cards that need cards and graveyards which surveil gives you yep. i'm not saying this thing doesn't have potential right yeah i'm just saying like along with mr medina this right. ain't a 10 to 12 dollar card yeah. or whatever there's a big gap between snapcaster mage and terrible there is playability mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, a lot of things... The best example of this is there have been a lot of things that have tried to be Dark Confidant. Mm. Some of them, Pain Seer, didn't get there. Some of them, Guilt Sleeve, Glint Sleeve Slife, Siphoner, Got did it. get there. Yeah. There's a big gap in there between yeah. the best creature ever printed, probably, mm -hmm. and unplayable garbage. Yeah. And Mission Briefing is somewhere in there. Right. And we'll see exactly where it falls, but again, this being like... Right Eight dollars is a lot. It's just no. It's yeah. just no. All right. Murmuring Mystic is next, also known as Young Fly Romancer. <laughs> um, let's let's must be clear. I'm definitely naming a business in my in the Broken Pact available Saturdays on Twitch.tv slash D and D. Plug branding. One. Hash Brown branding. <laughs> Hash um, Brown. <laughs> Woo! There, there's definitely going to be a be store. You hash browns this morning. Oh, I'm the worst. Oh, worst man. ever. Worst. Is that going to stay a big in sandwich, the hash though. brown? It's a big sandwich, though. <laughs> uh, the Murmuring Mystic, definitely going to be a store where you can buy scrolls and potions and stuff. Nice, nice. Uh, and, and this, by the way, the, 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 um, the, the Invocation Days style illusion birds. Oh, yeah. Uh, gorgeous. This is going to be in a very expensive foil if it sees any amount of play at all. It is a blue and three generic mana for a 1-5. That is an uncommon human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. Now the 1-5... So when you gird, you, you can gird, gird the bird. <laughs> you gird the bird. Gird the really, bird. Really hurt. And get more bird. A bird, bird, bird. Bird is the gird. Wow. So, yes, you do get to get the bird when you gird. And... <laughs> <laughs> the, the five toughness actually turned out to be a huge deal at the Pro Tour yeah. because Artful Dodge is minus two, minus four, and it just couldn't kill the freaking Murmuring Mystic. This card five seems like a real. It seems like the crux point. Yeah. Um, for Aurelia and for Murmuring Mystic, there's a lot of minus four and four damage effects. There's also Lava Coil, which we'll talk about in the, the red section. Right. Which is the premier removal spell. It only deals four. In addition to the minus two, minus four, which we'll talk about Justice later. Justice Strike doesn't. Justice, well, yeah, uh, Justice Strike deals five. Justice Strike deals damage to itself. Oh, to itself. Right. Yes. There's response and. So it would do one damage cards. to itself. It would deal one damage yeah. to itself. Yeah, this thing avoids a lot of removal. 
It really does. It's it's really tough to get uh, to get a hold of. I think this is four mana because they wanted to keep it out of constructed. They, sure. Because if this was two mana, just like Young Pyromancer, this would definitely be a constructed oh, worthy card. Well, also the fact that it creates flyers, I think, right. warrants the bump right. in mana cost. You know, one one elementals can be blocked all day. We've seen Tall Rand, Sky Summoner at four, yep. which yeah. is a two two that made two twos. This is a one five that makes one ones. Right. Honestly, I kind of would rather have the five toughness than Talran. Yeah, because yeah. Talran died very quickly. All the time. All yeah. the time. Whereas this is not going to die very much. And again, in limited, this thing is an all-star. Yes. Because it's blocking too. This is like your all-star blocker. Right. This is the guy that gums up and the And jumpstart gets you many, many, many birds. Yes, it does. Which gets you evasive attackers while this holds up the ground. So this card is super good. Yeah. Not necessarily a first pickable card in my opinion, but this is like if I'm in the blue deck I mean, and I see the second or third. I'm not hating first picking yeah, this. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with Ruben. If you have sort of the, you know, the blue card we had earlier, the Dazzling Lights, you know, yeah. if you have sort of these blue, right. you want to play a dirtily tempo game of this is my plan and I have a bunch of these blue spells that nobody else wants, right. I'm happy to play that game. Yeah. Right. But that to me is you're already in there. Like, yeah. It was this, is like, this is in my guild, my guild gate control. It was kind of like Drake Haven, right. where like it was something yeah. you really had to commit to, but if you right. had the tools, you could have a Drake came in down. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So this is not pick one, pack one for me, but like pick two, pack one. Oh, for sure. Maybe yeah. if I got yeah. all the sweet jump starts and pack one. Muse Drake is next. It's a blue and three generic mana for a one, three common Drake that when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and also has fly. And Splashable in your mentor deck. It's, it's fine. Good. It's splashable. There's another one. There's a green card that lets you kind of say, hey, you're going to pay X for these stats and you're right. also going to pay Y for this card. Right. Um, this is a card that if, basically if you said it's a two mana one three flyer, but it has kicker of two draw a card, right. would you play that card? 100% yeah, of the time. Of and so this is just saying like, we're just going to bypass the middle man and just be like, here you go. Right. It's kind of underwhelming in many ways, but again, yeah. it blocks two power top stuff. It has evasion. There's a bunch of two power flyers in the set that this just sort of stands in front of and replaces itself. Um, this is good filler. A lot of, I mean, this is if this is your twenty third best card, you're happy. Yeah. Right. This was the card I saw at the Pro Tour blocking the two three Vigilance yeah. flyer. Right. Just all day. It's like block. Nope. Yep. No thanks. And then eventually got out Murmur and Mystic. And then with those flyers was able to double block and things. Sure. So it's it's a good card that doesn't come at an amazing rate, but that's okay. It's okay. Not everything can be the best card ever. Right, and they, this is a middling draft pick. This yeah. is a always play in your sealed pool if you're blue. You'll probably wheel these and be okay with it. Yeah, be all right. This is a card I don't want infinite of, but I'd be happy with two. Yeah, be all right. Narco Amoeba is next. What's Narco Amoeba do? <laughs> what does that do? It has my heart. That's what it does. Um, so Narco Amoeba, I'm really, really excited about this card. One in a blue. It's just flying. When it, when you put it into your graveyard from your library, you may put it on the battlefield. If you're surveilling, I mean, living the dream is surveil too, and whoop whoop, and getting two Narco Amoebas, that feels amazing. Uh, I really want to talk about the art, though. Howard Lyon posted the other day a high-res image of this art. And if you look really closely in the background, you see a young man with a fishing pole who's who's trying to catch the Narco Amoeba mm -hmm. and his cat. And that's just such an amazing yeah. little Easter egg in this artwork. And so I'm really excited. This is a card I I remember when it was spoiled, I had taken a nap and I had woken up that when they were tweeting the spoilers and I still thought I was dreaming because I was like, is this is this really happening? <laughs> so, Which fits the flavor text. Citrus Supplier is still a thing in standard. Being able to Citrus Supplier for three, whoop, 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 there's an Archimeba. I mean, people are really going to experience the joy of this card. And uh, I mean, there are just some cards, which we'll talk about later, that really, the Dream Eater surveilled four. I mean, yeah. you could really live the dream here and just get multiple Archimeba triggers. And honestly, two mana, one, one flyer and limited is like fine. Yeah. You can hook up auras and equipment to it. It's, I mean, if it's in your opening hand, it's not a mulligan. It's yeah. not totally irrelevant. No. Right. Evasion is always good, even if it's it's on a 1-1 one, one overcosted flyer that has no additional text if it starts in your opening hand. Right. But the real exciting part is surveilling. Yeah, I mean, if, if you surveil this at all during your draft, it is 100% yeah. worth playing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't take many free casts to go like, wow, Narcomeba is fantastic. Right. <laughs> it is. And it. Uh, I, I look forward to the day that we do the one blue and a generic mana, you know, blue creatures. Yeah top 10 list because mm -hmm. there's some amazing blue creatures for a blue and a generic mana such as Snapcast that we talked about you know right. that you can uh, that you can really sink your teeth I into. think it also says something that it's been printed at rare like to me I think Wizards is saying okay we've given you tools this could be a thing yeah <laughs> yeah this at Uncommon I think might be a problem in Limited mm -hmm. because no other deck wants it other than the Surveil deck right and so if it's an Uncommon sometimes you'll get those drafts where you get four of the same Uncommon if you have four Narc Amoebas in your limited deck that's a lot yeah. congratulations uh, this is also interesting fact about this card is it was first printed in Future Sight mm -hmm. and has not been printed in a uh, standard legal set yeah. since 
So technically, this isn't a reprint. This is a first printing. Nice. Okay. Where nice. Future Sight was Future the Future Sight looked deep into the Guilds of Ravnica and yanked it out yep. and put it in your Future Although Sight, so. the flavor text of Narc Amoeba from Future Sight references a different plane of existence yeah. hmm. than Ravnica. It just so happens... Well, it's an illusion that can kind of go it can go. It can do whatever it, it, wants. it wants. Slipstream between worlds, as it were. But if yeah. Narc Amoeba is a standard, Aaron Campbell's playing standard. That's just what's nice. happening. I, <laughs> I 100% believe Narc Amoeba is going to be in standard. Yeah. I think surveil cards are too good. They pushed it far enough. Again, having just seen it being played limited, yeah. I'm like, wow, if I get to do that in Constructed, it's going to get gross. Yeah. yeah. Night Veil vale Sprite is next. It's a blue and generic mana for a 1-2 uncommon fairy rogue that has flying, and whenever it attacks, you surveil one. This card is dope. This card is really good. Dope. This is, if you remember how good Thrumming Bird was mm -hmm. in its limited environment, he there are, Thrumming Bird. there are, if you have a colorless and a blue flyer that does something relevant to whatever your game plan is, has the set's keyword in it, mm -hmm. it is worth paying attention to. Surveilling one every turn is a huge deal. And not a lot of not a lot of decks are going to be able to deal immediately with a 1-2 flyer or are going to want to deal with a 1-2 flyer. You're very often going to be able to attack, uh, or at least bluff combat tricks, attacking into 1-3 flyers like Muse Drake or the, the new Rock Charger, mm -hmm. uh, and bluff a combat trick. And Or if you have a combat trick, then they're going to have to block even if you have it. And so I really like Night Veil Sprite quite a bit. It's it's super, super good. It's it's not just, you know, if you had a creature that said it's a, it's a two-mana one-two that when it attacks, uh, you scry one, right? Mm -hmm. That's not nearly as good as when you have a set that has Jumpstart in it. Yeah. As when you have a set that has Narc Amoeba, ooh, I got a free creature. I mean, and Undergrowth, It's even yeah. just splashable in the Mentor deck. You know, with sure. the Mentors, of just, you know, you can make it bigger, number one. And again, that's a deck that wants to constantly be drawing gas. And so if you want to make sure that you're always applying the pressure, is it a creature? Is it a spell? Nope. Just right. being able to make sure that you're not drawing lands when you want to keep applying the pressure. Card selection is a huge deal in a lot of archetypes. The blue-green deck in M19 and in Dominaria is a filtering, like, mm -hmm. card flow mm -hmm. strategy, and this is a perfect kind of card flow card. Right. I think if you were to say that if it attacks, you scry one, that's like drawing maybe a half or a third of a it's card. Probably a third of a card. This, to me, is almost two-thirds of a card yes. because of so much synergy with the rest of the set. Right. Like, this card is super, super good, very highly pickable, uh, with, uh, with no downside, honestly. Like, it even has two toughness. Yeah. It's great. Also brings Fairy back into Standard, the creature type. Yeah. Fairies haven't been in Standard since uh, 2015. They can stay out of it. Well, fair. Okay. Omni Spell Addict. I'm all about inclusivity. Fairies are welcome. Oh, fairies are welcome, but yes. just not in Standard. Oh, there. That's not cool. We're done. Omni Spell Adept is ridiculous, to yeah. be honest. It's a blue and four generic mana for a 3-4 rare human wizard. Blue and two generic mana tap colon. You may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. So I have a rules question here. Hi. And maybe. Yes. Okay. Um, so does this mean that you're casting it and then it, it leaves your hand? Or you can just whoop? Oh, you're casting it. Oh, so like, you can recast it, leaves, it. No, it leaves your hand and you're casting the card. Okay, so it's not it like... It goes on the stack. Yes. Okay, so it was, it's not like something where you get to still... Because like, remember, Splice was kind of wonky like that. Right. right. You're casting that, it is, still... that changes mode, modal okay. ability. That affects cards that are on the stack already. Okay. This enters the stack. Okay. Right. As part this lets you just, again, three mana, play any instant or sorcery at instant speed. Regardless of Apex of power not. is a thing from yeah. M19. I mean, there's even some really expensive... We talked about how burn spells have just kind of increased in, in cost. <clears> and <throat> so there's a couple in this set that are normally expensive, but being able to pay it for three for them, I think yeah. a lot of people would do that. Uh, really exciting card for Commander and yeah. for Brawl as well, because you have a lot of big effects that you want to be doing in those formats. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to... <laughs> do, do place this allows you to play sorceries at instant speed if yep. I'm not mistaken so you can it, middle of combat star of extinction or whatever <laughs> like it like whatever what have you or a uh, uh, world fire yeah. although that card's banned in commander but there are, there are effects like that obliterate right, right. big Chocolates. giant yeah chocolate even just in a, in, in a worst case scenario even just Spells that you can afford, but you might not have the right mana for. Sure. Or you're like, oh crap, I'm one red short, I don't have the right color. Yeah. I mean, just getting around that is really cool. Right. This is a card that, first of all, on rate, 5 mana, 3, 4 is fine. Being able to play anything at instant speed as a sorcery or an instant, be able to bypass the mana cost. I don't have black mana yet. Yeah. Well, I can still play this black removal spell because this card exists. I don't see this going anywhere in construction. <laughs> 
This is not the type of card that works in standard no. because there's too much removal. There's not enough big spells. There's a whole host of reasons why this reads amazing, <coughs> but will ultimately just be a commander slash casual card yeah. and or a great limited card. But you know the Wizards was worried about it because <clears throat> look at that cost. Yeah. That, that five is not a coincidence. Five they is not knew. a coincidence. And three, four, this probably started as like a four mana, two, three, or a three mana, oh one, my one. God. And then they were like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you got to make sure this is... You just, can't no. activate this till turn six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a card that gets it gets poo-pooed because on five on turn turn five, you play it and nothing happens. Uh, other interesting thing about this card is that you can play the historic spells from Dominaria mm -hmm. uh, as a result of this card without having to have a historic legend in play, I believe. Nice. I mean, puts it immediately on the stack. It's a right. nice resource card. Don't yeah. pay its cost. So if you really want to, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess the first two I thought of have X in their cost, so that's not particularly good. But if you really need to Urza's ruinous blast, there we Karn's go. Temporal Sundering. There we go. We, there if, we if you really need to Karn's temporal summoning or or Yogmoth's offering. Nexus uh, of Fate. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Dude, what we needed, just what we needed, was another reason to play Nexus. Another, of Fate. another way to do that. Um, this is a card that if. I see this in standard. I feel like something's gone wrong. Yes. <laughs> like something's broken or like yep. what happened? Yep. Yeah. Because they've given you tons of amazing removal. And when you have amazing removal, you need things that hit the board and affect the board immediately. Not, I have to have this in my hand. I have to have this in play. I have to man have the mana open. It has right. to be relevant. Blah, 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 blah. That's great in fun, casual yeah. formats. It's terrible in constructive yeah. formats. Passwall Adept is a two mana, blue and generic mana for a 1 3 common human wizard. And it has blue and two generic mana colon. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Good mana sink, great for breaking up board stalls, yeah. which sometimes happens in Limited, where you just kind of run this weird standoff and neither one of you either has evasion or you have no way to really punch through. This is a great way to do that. And it's something I seem to recall paying more for in previous sealed formats of, yeah. you know, you can make like one creature unblockable for like four. And so this is this is cheaper than I'm used to, and it's a great way to do that. Yeah. Just to, I, I mean, this card solid. I'm, I'm happy to have one, maybe two of these in my limited deck, depending on how controlling I am. Two mana one threes are, are a, a, a big staple of limited environments now. Not as many two ones for two in this set, not as many goblin pikers, so it's not as important as, you know, your river hoopoos and things like that back well, in the well, day. Well, there is the, the two mana first strike two two. Sure. Like, that this blanks. This is the card you want on turn two to stop the Boros yes. deck from running you over and getting like two out of control. Right. So you can play this, and then late game, because you're the Demir deck, or you're the control deck, you're the slow deck. Right. But you normally have high toughness creatures that don't deal on damage. Yeah. Also might not be bad against the Celestia decks. You know, we talked earlier about how sometimes you have a fatty that doesn't have any evasion and the Celestia deck just has you a just bunch of one it, ones. Yeah. And so that always feels terrible, but giving that fatty again just a way to punch through without really right. having to And stand and you know if your opponent has two one if your opponent played a raise the alarm style card and has two one one tokens and you play an O five, they can still attack you and deal and do you some chip damage. Pass wall add up discourages that with its one extra power. Yeah, yeah this is a card Just that's, a solid card. Don't pick it early. Oh. It'll come around late. It's fine. I wouldn't want to play a whole bunch of it, but it, it is one of those cards that I want to have yeah, at least one. card's fine. Quasi-Duplicate. Oh, this card's sweet. Yeah. It is two blue and a generic mana for a rare sorcery that creates a token that's a copy of target creature you control, and it also has Jumpstart. Yay! This card is real. Is real. It's constructed playable. It needs a deck... Um, which I don't know if it has right now, but it is. It, this is something. There's something here. This is a three mana for this effect is what you pay normally right. for mirror image and for other cackling uh, counterpart. I think is yeah, what it reminds me of exactly yeah. right. And yeah, cackling counterpart's a great one because its flashback is seven, and quasi duplicates flashback is discard a card and pay three, <laughs> which is great. Right. Um. Yeah. This card is is has the potential to see standard play. Yeah, this is a huge limited card. This is a bomb. Play every copy that you're going to find. You make tokens of the best thing that you have, and then you can wait and just hang out until you play whatever huge bomb you have, and then copy it if yep. you want to. Like, it gives you the flexibility. Oh, this card, like, cantrips when it enters the battlefield, and I really need something? Yeah. You can just do that and copy that guy. Like, there was... Much uh, less quasi-duplicating Dream Eaters and, oh. and venerated Loxodons. That's a world I want to live in. Just Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of powerful, powerful stuff you can do with this card, and it's because you can do it twice. Yeah. If it was just the one time, we wouldn't be excited, but it's the two time. It's the ability to surveil it into your graveyard and later on be like, oops, I guess I'll make a token of this awesome thing. Yeah. You probably shouldn't do that. You should draw it, but regardless. The point is, it has flexibility, and that yeah. is awesome. The fact that you can make a second and a third copy and play quasi-triplicate is really nice. Wow. Quasi-triplicate. 
quad quadruplicate. Quad well, quad eye duplicate would be if you put it back in your graveyard and made a fourth copy. Wait, would that mean if you have four eyes? Quad eye. Quad eye duplicate. Gotcha. The only. Okay. You, I got you four eyes. Because he's got glasses now. Is he thinks it makes him smarter. I'm actually. <laughs> And then I just got, got some yeah. of my glasses. That's well, crazy. you're certainly on a Quasimodo. Wow. Wow. I'm going gonna, gonna to arch my back up a little bit yeah. here. Uh, I have a hunch that he's going <laughs> to... Wow. Wow. Radical idea is a blue and generic mana for a common instant that says draw a card and has jumpstart. Yay! Yeah, think twice. This is very similar to Chemister's Insight. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I, I mean, it's close to Constructed Playable. Um, we've Close. seen Think Twice in Constructed before, and I would not be shocked to see it again. Yeah. This card is fine. Well, the issue is that Think Twice was card advantage. advantage. This is discarding a card. This is more like a catalog This is filtering. Yeah. Right. This is filtering. And it's fine to filter. You know, you're, you're giving up this card to get a different card. You're giving right. up that card to get another card. That's okay. This is that. This is the card that if you're playing uh, the creature that gets bonuses off yes. and some sorceries, you want to play this type of card, play Leapfrog. Um, you know, this is a card that builds into a strategy, but don't think of it as a card draw spell. Think yeah. of it as a card filtering, more like a tormenting voice type spell, where it's good in that it kind of moves through your deck, but it's not giving you more cards than the man you're putting in on. Right. And that, that to me, is the, the big difference. Whereas Think Twice is like a card and a half, yeah. you know, type of card, where, whereas this is just filtering. So it, 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 it moves a lot lower in the pick level. Sure. I'm still probably going to play one in my blue decks in Limited, oh, yeah. just because it is good to have that filter in Especially there. Especially in Limited, when you have so many extra lands in the late game, you're able to turn that extra land, your eighth or ninth land drop, into the extra card. Right. This one, I think more than any other Jumpstart card, more or less has a retrace on it. Yeah. You know, kind of how that works. Selective Snare is a blue and X. Aaron was very confused by this card. Yeah, I, I, I was very confused. We'll get to that in a second. Well, it is an uncommon sorcery that says return X target creatures of the creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. Yeah, so to be clear, you have to, they have to all be the same creature type. Um, and so this is great against if you're playing the quasi duplicates and they make multiple tokens. You know, that's a really great way to sort of say whatever that is and then whoop. Um, you know, there's a lot of humans in this set, a lot of knights in this set, a lot of things of the same creature type. And this is a really clean way to sort of deal with them, especially, you know, you have the indestructibles or you yeah. have the whatever. Um, very nice. Decent way to deal. I mean, not a, I mean, it's, it's a good way to deal with history of Benalia. Mm -hmm. It's a decent way to deal with things like Legion War Boss, mm -hmm. um, some of the make lots of 1 1 humans with lifelink abilities. Selective Snare is fine. I don't ever anticipate it being like a five for one, but you know, return two target creatures that randomly share a type. That's fine. Yeah. I would. I mean, you know, of course, every spell will be better if you put draw a card on it or whatever. But right. I would be happier if this card like surveilled, maybe or just did one. Anything. You know, just anything. This could be return to X target creatures and surveil X. How exciting would that be? That would be amazing. You know, and that would kind of play into. But yeah, this card's not not intended for a standard. I don't think nah. this is a. If this is in standard sideboards, something has gone weird. Well, we got really weird down the knights road. We right. got really weird maybe down the elf or the goblins, goblins elves, in a humans. Weird, in a weird corner case, you can also target your own creatures. Right. But sometimes yeah, bounce bounce your two humans. Bounce my human that, that has a comes into play ability. Right. Um, yeah. It's 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 more. I it's think, a sorcery. It costs X. It doesn't replace itself. Like it's it's not ideal. It's not that great. I'm, I'm not that excited about it. But sinister sabotage. Someone is, as we have a very special guest who's going to talk about it. Hi everybody. MTG Pack Hoyles here, also known as Scott Campbell on strictlyaveragemtg.com. You can find my articles there every Monday. Uh, thanks to the Magic Mike's crew for allowing me to be part of the set review. And happy birthday, Evan Irwin. Uh, as many of you know, I am an Azurius Control Mage, and I'm always looking for sweet counter spells to play in any format. And there's one that came out with the first part of the set review that I've been keeping my eye on ever since, and that's Sinister Sabotage. Granted, it's a Demir Watermark card, but for any color and two blue mana, you can counter any spell. Plus, you also have the neat uh, mechanic called Surveil, where you can take a look at the top card of your library, choose either to either put in your graveyard or on top of your library. And then of course you take your next turn because that spell is an instant, uh, which is always key for any type of control deck that's want to use a draw go strategy, which is which are the types that I favor. The key thing with the surveil mechanic though is that you feel your own search for Iskanta, a card released in Ixalan, and that's also been a big part of control decks over many formats. Uh, so these surveil mechanic type cards are ones you're going to want to look out for to help fuel your control strategies. Get your search for his content going and tell your opponents no as often as you can. 
I want to thank the Magic Mike's crew uh, for allowing me to be a part of their set review. And you all have a great day. And until next time, tap more mana. Wow. Well, thank you, Scott, very much. A long, long time supporter of the show. Yeah. Thanks for wishing me happy birthday. Yeah. Because it's my birthday. And I get to talk about the new set on my birthday. Come on, party like it's my, you know how it does. Sinister Sabotage is a terrific spell. The kind of default counterspell plus set mechanic card that we get more or less every block. Right. Um, but this one is, I think, absolutely good enough to see play. Traditionally, they see play about 70% of the time. The cancels with upside, uh, particularly when it's card filtering, things like um, uh, we talked about. This, what was the, the one from Theros? The, yeah, the, the scry one. Right. It was referenced earlier that I'm not forgetting the name of. There's Dissipate, Dissolve. You know. Yeah. yeah there's dissolve, been, that's the one. Yeah, there's been those kind of, you know, little tweaks on yeah. cancel. I think Wizards wants Counterspell just like they want Stone Rain to be two and a half mana. Right. But they can't make it two and a half mana, so they make it three mana. Right. Or if we're Stone Rain, they want to be three, three and a half mana. Half mana but yeah, yeah, but just like that. They have they want it to just be a little cheaper, but they can't, so they give you a little bonus yeah. to incentivize you to play them. Yeah, the art looks a lot like Chris Pratt to me. That's what I see when I see that. And, sure. you know, I love the flavor text of sort of the denier. You have you have somebody who's very obviously... Some good an, is foreshadowing. It, yeah, you have somebody who's very text. obviously an is it trying to do something. And the denier... You know, the denier kind of sound like they're almost the heroes of this set. You know, they, they know something's going on. They're one of the few guilds it does. And until they really can figure it out, nobody can do anything. And yep. so you see them kind of just giving you the denier symbol of ha ha no. And so I like that. And he's yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. This one also <laughs> is going to have a F&M promo of okay. it. Oh. Uh, and they've been better about the FNM promos being playable. Another hint towards it being constructed playable. Right. This one's a really good card. Yeah, I mean, it's good and limited. Again, not an amazing first pick or anything, but this is, you're in the surveil deck, you're in the blue deck, you're in the gate deck. Yeah. You know, you want to control the game a little bit. Um, better in sealed than it is in draft, just because of mana curve reasons, but uh, it is still a good counter spell. Thoughtbound Phantasm is one blue for a 2-2 Uncommon Spirit with Defender. When you Surveil, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. And as long as it has three or more plus one plus one counters, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So once it becomes a 5-5, five five, it's going to kill you. I'm in. <laughs> I, this card's real good. Yes, it is. This, this card's card very good. Saw a lot of play at the Pro Tour and absolutely got to 5-5 five five really quickly, yeah. honestly, over a couple turns. And then started smashing in, and it keeps getting counters every time you surveil. It doesn't yeah. like turn off or whatever. It just keeps getting bigger, right? As you continue to surveil. You mean like, worlds? At yeah. uh, at the pro tour, yeah, the world. The worlds. Event. Worlds is a pro tour. <laughs> you know the, what I mean? The fifth slash seventh pro <sighs> tour. Um, yeah, thoughtbound phantasm comes down as a two two. Immediately surveils up to a three three. Defender, which mm -hmm. is very difficult for anything to get past. Right. Um, you know, you can play this on turn one, and by turn three, it's a four four. What's ever attacking past that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to throw a combat trick and a creature at this. Yeah, game between this, stuff. some Narcomibas, and the chill, which we'll talk about later, that's a deck. And yeah. it's a deck I want to be playing, and I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> this is one of the this is one of your payoff uncommons. This is the the uncommon that you see, and you go, oh, no one else is in surveil. I'm surveilling. Yeah. Because... Reminds me of Jace's Phantasm. Yep. You know, it kind of starts off with a little 1 1, and before you know it, it's a 4 4, and you're in trouble. Yeah. Right. Whereas Absolutely. this one, you know, it just it fuels, you know, it gets scary. Well, we've also mentioned earlier in the show that it really, you know, tribal strategies and just, just certain strategies really count on that one drop. You know, zombies, what's the one drop? Okay, we've got Crit Breaker. Okay, this can happen now. And, you know, again, having a good one drop really adds some validity to this type of strategy. Yes. Right. If there's going to be sort of a surveil control deck and standard that can stop these monster green decks from running you over, yeah. it's making this thing huge, and then later, killing your opponent with it. Unexplained Disappearance is next. It's a blue and generic mana for a common instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand and surveil one. Yeah. Yay, it's our unsummoned it's voy Voyage's end. It's fine. Voyage's in Dominaria, end. you guys had the, uh, there was there was something that I, the eye. Blink of the eye. Yeah, Blink that one. Uh, yeah. People were main decking or that. into the royal. Yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, those, have, those are the kicker yeah. when you get a billion extra cards. Uh, Voyage's end saw a ton of play in Limited and Theros, and this is the same card, except for instead of Scry, it has Surveil. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a highly playable card. This one, again, really good with the, with the Surveil um, deck. Right. Uh, if you have lots of things that want Surveil, it's a great one. It also be used defensively, return your own thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's unsummon, and so if you've ever gotten a chance to play with unsummon, it's an awesome playable card and limited yep. every single time. There's not Let like alone if you have synergies that go along with it. Exactly the the fact that you have so many creatures and things that get bonuses off surveilling makes this even way way. Better. I want to bounce my own dream eater. Just yeah, end of turn, do it again. Yeah, <laughs> so much surveilling, perfect. So, so much, much eating. 
Fantastic. Veldalkin Mesmerist is next. A blue and generic mana for a common 2-1 Veldalkin Wizard. Whenever Veldalkin Mesmerist attacks a target creature and opponent control, it gets minus 2, minus 0 <laughs> until end of turn. Is it Vidalkin? Vidalkin. Ve Vidalkin. Vel Veldalkin? Vidal I was saying Vidalkin. I was Vidalkin. Let's put the L in front of the D. Veldakin. Veldaklin. Veldakin. Vidalkin Mesmerist. Yep. Is a card. It's a two drop. It's fine. It's good. It's a weirdly aggressive. It is two a drop. weirdly aggressive yeah. two drop. I mean, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I mean, it lets you attack into you know your opponent. You play this. Your opponent plays a bear, and you attack the next turn. Like, that's pretty great. You yeah. know, blue, for a blue card. Yeah. This is a uh, this card just kind of puzzles me. I'm just like it's hmm. a little weird. It's very aggressive for blue. Well, it, we've got a little bit of a tempo thing going on in the Jumpstart deck with uh, with Leapfrog and some of the other stuff. This is a fine two drop to have in those sort of you want to be tempoing, turning stuff sideways deck. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't like you're never going to early pick it in limited. You'll get it on the wheel. Yeah, it might be one of like your your two drops. You need a two drop. This is a two drop. It's yeah. fine. It might get in some early damage. That's nice too. Sure. Um, it's just it's very strange to me. It is. It is a weird one, but it's, I like it. It's yeah, I like it in the fact that it's it can shut down. There's a there's a Golgari card that's just a two two death touch. Yeah, and this that's is perfect great. for yeah. blanking that type of card. Like oh, you got first strike. Grab that two mana two two first Aaron's strike. Aaron's so guy. mad at and you. Just like nope, no thanks. Yeah. I'm good. Allows you to attack into the 2 3 Vigilance Mentor Flyer. Why did the Golgari have to be um, there? But, well, because that card's really good. Yeah, that card is, is no exactly life. the no, kind of. No respect. Mm -hmm. The Death Touch, sh shutting off Death Touch is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and you can shut off Lifelink on the other side of the board. Lots of good stuff like that. I just, I want to put this with the with the white cards. You know, if you don't have enough to really fill out those those Mentor decks yeah. again, just having It seems like there's a drop. blue white sort yeah. of Temple Aggro deck. Hmm. There you go. Wall of Mist is next. It's a blue and a generic mana for an 05 Defender Common Wall. Yeah, we've we've seen this recently in Corset, um, and it, it's a it's a filler card. Sometimes you'll sideboard it in. It's okay. It's hit or miss. Yeah, it, it, it has the the magic five. Did toughness. you just say that it's hit or miss? <laughs> oh my god, that was a subliminal. It was really really not great hit right there. Wall, Wall of Mist is not the greatest card. It's, no, it's, it's fine. just a tribute. All right. Watcher in the Mist. This is... card, on the other hand, is amazing. Woohoo! Card is great. It's two blue, three generic mana for a three four common spirit that has flying. And when it enters the battlefield, batter from battlefield. Blah, blah, blah. When it enters the battlefield, you surveil too. <laughs> Why is love like a battlefield? <laughs> a battlefield that you mix together and you cook into a so this cake is field. this is uh, Cloud Reader Sphinx, except yeah. for instead of scry, it's surveil. We, we're sensing a theme here. They played it pretty Buttery. safe. Smoothery, <laughs> smooth. That's right. Watcher in the Mist, uh, much like Cloud Reader Sphinx, is going to be a very playable card. Uh, the two blue man is a little bit tougher, so you can't play it in your five color uh, gate deck yes, nearly as reliably. Yes, you, you can. I'll still do it. You're still going to do it. Oh yeah, but my five color mix up grow from the ashes decks in Dominaria could always cast Cloud Reader Sphinx on turn four. Meanwhile, Watcher, you might not. If you lead, you need to have the right locket to be able to play your Watcher in the Mist on turn four. I have played every Cloud Reader Sphinx that has been given to me. Oh, for times, sure. And I've had like three in my deck. Absolutely. It's amazing. So, like, this so card. Watcher is... in the Mist is spectacularly good. Goes right in Surveil deck, goes right in the Gate deck. If you're I doing mean, things with Undergrowth, is amazing. Three, like, four flyers for five, always going to be yeah. a okay. Always going to be good. Fan freaking fantastic. Early pick and limited, always play it in Seal. There's just. There's hardly any downsides to this card. <laughs> Speaking of things that I'm going to name businesses. <laughs> After this is the wish coin crab is going to be a business that you can visit in my in my D and D game. Nice. I don't know what business it'll be, oh, yeah. but uh, you can have you some wish coin crab legs yeah. there. Gonna have, oh, it could um, be a restaurant. Could be a restaurant. Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. Not the wish. Coin. I was thinking that it could be like an oddities shop. Mm. Welcome to the wish coin crab. Can I help? Can I interest you in this monkey's paw? <laughs> like just adorable random garbage like that. And we say this because there's not much to say about the actual card. Wish coin it's crab. A two five for whatever. Is a blue and three generic mana for a two five common crab. The end. Yeah, who cares? I mean, okay. we had ancient carp before. It's a two five for four. I don't think it's that. It, it excites very very few people. Uh, including Indeed. myself. Don't pick it early. Don't play it unless you have to. And then you should yeah. think about playing and something else. And then you should else. think about playing something else. And like, sage life advice. Don't ever first pick crabs. Just don't. Wow. Well, I've had crabs before. And I, <laughs> I plan on having them again because they're delicious. Okay. Oh, that sentence went in a different direction. That went totally... <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. 
That was All a right. roller coaster of emotions for it you. It was absolutely incredible. Well, we go from one card that's not that great. To I was going to say this table looks like it. You could roll out the paper towels and have the have like just dump the crabs out on the table and break them apart. Yeah, because this feels like we're at the bay. Yeah, on this, <laughs> on this fantastic uh, art, uh, this artisan table. So artisan, which yeah. just usually means from scratches. From artisan and, table yeah. to an artful takedown. This, yeah, there we go. Okay. Wow. Well, I was going to say something else, but that was a perfect segue. So. Segue it is. Artful takedown is a black, blue, and two generic mana for a common instant. Choose one or both. God, I love that sentence. Tap target creature, or target creature gets minus two, minus four until end of turn. And remember, give them the West Go, which is tap it and then kill it. And, and then they go like, they're just, they, they just pick it and kill it. You're like, no, 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 no. Tap, tap it, it Tap it, then kill it. Right. I mean, Agony Warps sees play in Popper. You know, we haven't really talked about Popper yet. You know, this is mm. something that could easily kind of slot in there. I really like the art on this one. I love sort of the the flavor text. You know, they mentioned that a fight being like choreography, and then you have like the rain, the dark kind of calls back to, you know, those Asian horror movies, or the Asian horror movies, the Asian action films with like the slick choreography, yep. the weapons, the darkness, the the shrouded figure, the close-up yeah. of the way the, the dagger is sort of flying at you. I, I love really it. love just sort of the feel of this card. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the hero, like, three-point land type thing Super almost. Superhero landing yeah. with the uh, the foreground dagger flying right at you. This card's uh, very artful. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, really good limited card. Good removal. Uh, it's able to uh, ruin a Boros deck's day, tapping down whatever their biggest creature is and then killing their second biggest creature most of the time. Right. Um, it, yeah, the card's really good. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it, this is a We've seen effects early... like this before. Things like Winter Flame, where mm -hmm. you were able to choose one or both, tapping something down and then dealing damage. Right. Um, being able to deal with one card permanently and then another card at least tempo, tempo, tempo rarely. Tempo rarely. Tempo rarely. Uh, is is a huge deal, and so I yeah yeah the, uh, the the idea that again choose one or both it just to me says this is going to be way more fun and limited than if you only got one or the other right. or even if you got both you know sometimes maybe you don't want right. to give minus two minus four to something I don't know why but maybe sometimes right. you don't at least you can have that option which is great right and you're able to in popper you're able to tap down your atog kill your carapace forger which is a big deal which I will take every time. All right, this one is not... Connive is two <laughs> Demir mana and two generic mana, so two blue, black, Aaron, and a fashion, Aaron, two generic mana. Aaron, Aaron, you have to lean the other way. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Wait, were you <laughs> leaning this way to try to read the card upside down? <laughs> wow. Jesus. All right, well, it's two Demir, two generic for a rare sorcery. You gain control of target creature with power two or less, okay? Or concoct, which is insane, can <laughs> All right, so black and two, black, blue, and three generic mana for a rare sorcerer that says surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's really good. That's insane. Yeah. That is insane. First of all, if you're playing against the super aggressive hardcore deck and you're trying to play sort of a reanimator strategy, this card's amazing. Yeah. In the early game, you're like, great, I'll take your little whatever. Uh, the Legion War Boss, right? Yeah. Two? Take your Legion War Boss, take your Inspiring Unicorn, take yeah. your, your Death Toucher. Uh, take any of that kind of stuff. Whatever their three drop is, if they're on the draw, whatever their four drop is, if you're on the draw, mm -hmm. uh, if it happens to have just two power, right. uh, pretty darn good. And you're able to get back your best creature for just five mana. Control, or control, control magics are very, almost always two for ones. Kept oh, yeah. its last word softly. I mean, yeah. it's a net limitation, but yeah. Yeah, this and then the concoct half much better in the late game. Obviously, first of all, allowing you more card filtering, and second of all, rise from the grave. It's just a playable card. And even just hitting your dream eaters is just like, yeah, right. It only hits your creatures in your graveyard, which sometimes matters. Yeah, um, but but you've got watchers in the mist, and you've got other random control garbage in your graveyard usually. So yeah, this card is a. It's basically a bomb rare. I think yeah. it's it's one hundred. All of the playable. rare split cards are first pickable. I think. Yeah, they're all super good. The, the only question is like you know do I do I care that I now have to play a blue or black deck and if I play the blue black deck my card my deck is that is much more better. awesome yeah I mean it's possible I think sure. connive is a good enough card to play on its own so if right. you if you end up in is it or you end up in Golgari uh, it's it's fine obviously if you end up in the Demir deck you have upside yeah. right when you have really big upside too. Dark Blade Agent did so much work over the weekend as I saw it played both the pre pre release and at the Pro Tour Worlds if you will. It's a black, a blue, and a generic mana for a common human assassin. It's a 2-3, and as long as you surveil this turn, it has death touch, and quote, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw wow. a card. And let me tell you, it's easy to trigger, and it's hard to block. Yep. Fitting that this was played at the Pro Tour with John Finkel as one of the players, mm. uh, because this is the Shadow Mage Infiltrator. 
uh, dealing extra damage, who cares? The Ophidians have always been playable ever since Ophidian was a magic card. This one, you, if you you can uh, trigger it at, in, at instant speed, which yeah. is nice, so you can just attack with your 2-3 and not fear too much retribution. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, what would be funny is if you gave it Death Touch and then someone just distracted it. Um, no! Which would be, no! <laughs> hoisted by my own petard! Well, I mean, it's also possible to do, like, instant speed. So, like, so, if I'm understanding the rules correctly, so, like, let's say you attack with it, they they, they say no their... blocks, oh, yeah. and oh, then yeah. you just, like, an instant speed Correct. surveil, okay, great, I'm now going to draw a card and whatever. I mean, that right. could be fun, too. Or if you yeah. attack into their wall. Yeah. Uh, just as a bluff. Yeah. Even if they block, you're just like, all right, friend, I see how it is. <laughs> this time. This Yeah, you've this got time. me this time. You hear, like, the Wild West theme of, like, dum, dum, oh, you're just wow. staring at each other. Yeah, this card seems delightful. Mm -hmm. I mean, blind phantasms are fantastic. Two, three for three. Cards that have that kind of upside as well are really, really good. Right, and, uh, and a again, of, a lot of two twos in the set, like good on defense as well. This is one of those cards that had I not had the chance to see it at the pre pre release and at Worlds to be able to say maybe this card will work out if you have yeah. enough. Like, no, no, there's plenty of surveil. There's plenty of ways to trigger this thing. I saw yeah. it triggered all the time. You know, this card will do what you want it to do. I would say seventy five percent of the time. Yeah, which is great. Demir Spybug, aka Don't Lock Me Ever, <laughs> uh, is a black blue. <laughs> And uh, for a uncommon one one insect with flying and menace, which is so hard to block anyway. Flying and menace but is when, a very difficult combination. But when you surveil, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. This thing is bananas. Yeah. I think this card is crazy. And again, Card's having real good. Having seen gameplay of this set, this thing is amazing. Yeah. This thing is ridiculous, is incredibly hard to block. They will use the removal spells on it. You can get this thing to a two, two, or a three, three really, really quickly, particularly yeah. if this is your two drop. Yep. Like this thing is real in limited. I don't think it's constructed playable at all, but Maybe. I mean, maybe. Maybe. It, it's maybe. unblockable. How, how do you ever block this card? It's tough. It, it might be. Good enough. Cards, this card seems great. Yeah. I mean... I'd be happy... This is one of the first uh, multicolored cards where I'm happy to pick it first, and it's not a rare or a mythic. Really? Yeah. I would okay. I would be okay first picking Demir Spybug and drafting around it. And just go And just go for it. Yeah. yeah. Because, again, the payoff in this card is insane. Yeah. It is really, really good. Oh, Discovery and Dispersal. Sweet. Uh, Discovery is, this is the uncommon split card for Demir. It's a Demir mana and generic mana for an uncommon sorcery that says Surveil 2, then draw a card. That's very good. I yeah. saw it played many times. It's very, very good. Yeah. Or Dispersal is a black, blue, and three generic mana for an uncommon instant. Each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, then, discard, dis then discards a card. Note each opponent. Yeah. which is important in multiplayer. Uh, and otherwise, it's usually going to be, all right, you have no cards in hand, great. Pick up your stupid bomb and then right. discard it, please. The, and also, because it's an instant, it's oftentimes top deck bomb, play it, and then you go, that's nice, return it, discard it. Nice. Uh, do the old recoil trick. Exactly. Discovery, uh, being sorcery, I guess it makes sense, even though it's two mana, because you get to preordain, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Surveil 2 draw card is a really powerful effect. I would be happy to just play it for the Discovery half. Right, and remember, you do these things in order as they're written on the card. So you're going to surveil first and then draw the card, which is going to be great. Uh, another one of these, that one side is different speed than the other side, which is a little weird. Going to take some getting used to. It people, are gonna, people are definitely at your pre-release or at your release events going to try to cast Discovery at end of turn. Mm -hmm. Or, or, I will or try they'll try to, to fuse them together. Right. You know? Let's do both. Yeah, that's why not. Or they'll be doing dispersal at sorcery speed because they think that's the only time they can. Right. Because they're not reading the whole thing. Um, but regardless, this is a great early pick. Again, I saw it in play. This is the surveil deck card. This is the card you want in the surveil deck. It's perfect. Disinformation campaign is a black, blue, and generic mana for an uncommon enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and each opponent discards a card. Whenever you surveil, return disinformation campaign to its owner's hand. An it's uncommon an payoff. Odd card. Very strange. Yeah. I love it. I, I mean, I love it too. Great. I think I might like it more if it were a May, but the fact that like you have to return it is just like, oh, like people, uh, uh, people on Mythic Spoiler were calling this card fake news. Yeah. Because <laughs> wow. disinformation campaign's a lot to say. It's just fake being like news. fake news. Yep. <laughs> I like it. We fake news. I get cards, you lose cards. That cards, sounds good. Card is good in the surveil deck. Seems like it's really built for the gate deck, the, mm -hmm. the super slow control three, four color garbage deck. But you got to have a lot of surveil to but make you, this thing work. Right, and you need surveil in that archetype as well. Right. Uh, just a really interesting card. Interesting flavor to it, too. Right. This is one of those cards that 
I feel like it, had they made it 10 years ago, had they made it 12 years ago, it would have only done the first half. It would have yeah. been like, oh, there's this weird enchantment. Maybe you'll do something with it later. Maybe you get to balance it with something that you do later. Right. We're not going to give you this other option, this free thing that goes back to your hands so you can do it again later. Right. Um, it's just one of those things that, I, you know, having seen magic grow over the past God, 20 something years now because I'm an old man. You know, I, I get to see sort of the really nice designs and how they really fleshed it out. Yeah. And, uh, and this card is, is really a very sort of sleek, nice, smooth card. Would you, that you how would you, would you describe it as buttery smooth? It's not buttery smooth. Okay. That's oh. the five mana three four. I thought Jeez. I'd ask. And, <gasps> speaking of weird, Atrada the Silencer is a black, blue, and two generic mana for a 3-5 rare legendary vampire assassin, and it cannot be blocked. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. Yeah! That player loses the game if they own three or more exile cards with hit counters on them. It's, that's right, three times. Atrada's owner, shuff, Atrada's owner shuffles Atrada into I their library. I love this card. So I'm really excited about it, specifically for Commander, because you can choose to simply return her to the command zone. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult to, you know, between all the mana rocks and everything else, to get her back out there and to get her swinging and to hopefully, you know, get rid of an opponent. Uh, in Limited, you're only running 40-card deck, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have to shuffle her back in your library, odds are pretty good you're going to see her again. <laughs> um, and this is just exile removal, exile target creature. That's really, really awesome. Uh, again, with the off kilter power and toughness, you can't just strike her. She'll just do three to herself. That's fine. You mentioned, Ruben, that five toughness seemed to be an important uh, benchmark mm -hmm. in this format. She's also showing that off at having five toughness. Mm -hmm. I really, really like this card. I wouldn't quite call it a bomb rare, but it is really, I'd really I'd be happy good. to first pick it. I wouldn't be ecstatic like I would first picking an Aurelia, for example. Right. Uh, but Etrod is very, very, very good. I wouldn't be unhappy with it as my first pick. Right. I mean, part of it, there's a couple of different aspects of the card that I thought were interesting that I noticed when uh, it got to see play at Worlds, which was, first of all, it's unblockable. Yeah. And that mattered a lot in yeah. terms of getting the last few points in. Second of all, again, it's getting rid of any creature. Uh, and third of all, you're able to draw it again later with yeah. the chance of it. And sometimes, and they left it on the board for many turns, just being a 3-5 blocker, sure. which was oftentimes good enough for the moment right. and what it needed to do. So um, so this card is really, really sweet. I don't see it happening in Constructed, but I think Commander players, Limited players, sure. are going to love this thing. Now, what are you going to use as your hit counters? Hmm. Is the important... I would use, if I was allowed to at whatever venue I was at, I would use actual honest-to-God bullets. <laughs> Just, or like shell casings. Yeah. I don't know about all that. That's, I pretty, might use, that's pretty sweet. You know, I know when energy was a thing, uh, the kids were using Pokemon energy. Sure. And I know one of the Pokemon energy is a fist. Mm. So I might just have like little fists of like, mm -hmm. I've hit you. I've right. hit I was you. thinking just like human skulls. Yeah. Little, little, <laughs> well, why go with human skulls that are that are not real when you could go with actual tiny like bird skulls? There we go. Keep it creepy. What is that dark? Yeah. yeah. Rat, rat skull. Get oh weird up in here. <laughs> That you can buy at the Wish Coin Crab. <laughs> House, House Guild Mage is next. It's a black and blue for a 2 2 uncommon human wizard. It has two abilities, of course, it's the Guild Mage for Demir. It is blue, a generic mana tap colon. Ta target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Or black, two generic mana tap colon, surveil two. Seems fine. I think this is the best Guild Mage. It's very close. Both of those are very cheap. Right. Um, surveil two is a lot every turn. Every turn. Uh, keep the most dangerous thing locked down is extremely good. Um, I would not take most of the guild mages first in a below average opening pack. I would still commit to Demir if I had house guild mage. Yeah, sur surveil is hugely pushed. I know we've been saying that, but I'm telling you, it is an incredible ability that is worth yeah. the, the investment. And it makes sense flavorfully. It seems like Demir is the central signpost of the storyline of Guilds of Ravnica, that they are sort of the, because they're the information dealers and the researchers mm -hmm. and the librarians, that they're the ones that smell something fishy happening and it's not just the watery graves. Um, wow. <laughs> it's not just those overgrown tombs. Not just the fish telling. skulls that you put on your Atratas. Oh, yeah. Fish skull. Yeah. But this card, again, easy early pick. Fantastic barometer. If you see the second or third pick, you're like, oh, great. Demir's open. Yep. Because if they're anywhere near Demir, they are taking this card. The, again, look at how really many good. cards we talked about in this episode that was like, if you surveil, when you surveil, every time you surveil, do X. Like, those are huge. And we haven't even bonuses. gotten to the black ones yet. No. So. Like, we're still going. Yeah. We're still going. Lazav the Multifarious. Wow. Multifarious? I want to be Multifarious one day. Well, you'll, you'll have to practice. Right. <laughs> 
Well, the Lazal of the Multifarious seen some ways in Legacy, no oh, doubt. Really? You know why? Why? I'll tell you here in just a second. Okay. Lazav the Multifarious is a black and blue for a 1-3 mythic legendary shapeshifter. When Lazav the Multifarious enters the battlefield, you surveil one. I forgot that That's it even cool. had that ability. I know, right? I thought that it just had the other ability. No, no. The Jeez. other ability is X generic mana colon. It becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with its com with converted mana cost X, except its name is Lazav the Multifarious. It's legendary in addition to its other types. Uh, and what's the biggest creature they ever made for one right. mana? It's a Phyrexian Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. uh, so that card just doubled in value, by the way. Sure. Because okay. who knows if it's real? Who knows if it works? But don't you like one man of what, 13, 13? 12, 12. 12, 12. Multi knot. I like Trample. it. Trample. Love it. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Delightful. Uh, JD and Clem, Clem Perrin's one of my good friends. I uh, wrote an article and she believes that this might even be standard viable um, at sure. two mana. I mean, a two mana for a 1 3 that has this ability. Um, just again, being able to copy your best creature. If you're surveilling, anyways, you know, we've mentioned, you know, sometimes you, when you're doing any sort of self discard, sometimes you discard things you don't want to get rid of. And this is a way to, you know, kind of get them back and just sort yeah. of, I've even seen people talk about living the dream and other formats of like, can I get 15 mana for an Ember Cool? <laughs> like, can I do something? just to kind of benefit off of that and I and God bless them I think it's great wow well, you know, back in the day, Phyrexian Dreadnought was one of the cards that they were like, hey, Mirage is coming. Right. And it has this one mana 12 12 trampler. And we're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Well, one day they're going to make this weird clone thing that just pays one mana to become it. To become that. Yeah. Yes. That's adorable. I love it. I hope that works just because I think it's ridiculous. Mnemonic Betrayal is next. It's a black. Wait, hold on. Mnemonic. Mnemonic? There's no U. Okay. Mnemonic would be if it was powered by water pressure. Mnemonic means that it's word related. Mnemonic betrayal <laughs> is a black, blue, and a generic mana for a mythic sorcery. Hoo boy, this was the final mythic that they showed from the set, and it's a pretty, pretty crazy one. You exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana of, as though it were mana of any type to cast those spells at the beginning of the next end step. If any of those cards remain exiled, return them to their owners' graveyards, and then exile mnemonic. Mnemonic, but. This mnemonic, was betrayal. mnemonic betrayal. This was the preview card given to the So Many Insane Plays podcast, which is by Stephen Menendez and Kevin Crone, which are which are vintage gurus, right. mm -hmm. um, and rightfully so. There's been a lot of talk about this in vintage. You know, Yogmas Will is a thing. Yogmas Will is restricted. Um, blue decks are still, you know, the most popular decks in vintage, rightfully so. And so, you know, if you're trying to simply get your storm count up, or you're just simply trying to see what else is out there. You know, wanting access. Okay, fine. I'll take your ponder, which is restricted. Your brainstorm, which is restricted. Um, you know, you can even cast other things off of this. And so, um, yeah, this card's fantastic. Um, yeah. You can even cast your Black Lotus. Thanks. Right. <laughs> um, there's some really broken possibilities with this card. Get your opponent's paradoxical outcome yeah. out of their graveyard, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, Mnemonic Betrayal is, is a fascinating card. And being able to get another copy or another four copies, if you want, up to that many, uh, of Yawgmoth's Bargain, or not Yawgmoth's Bargain, Yawgmoth's Will, is certainly an attractive thing for Vintage. Mm -hmm. um, probably an attractive thing for Legacy as well. Uh, where you don't have access to will, uh, but you can in a mirror match of, of Assault Eye Control or any other, other blue-black kind of decks. You can take your opponent's Death Shadows out of your opponent's Death Shadow deck, thing, things like that. Um, I'm not seeing it as much for the more modern and standard no. formats. Uh, probably also not good in draft. Uh, yeah. Not the mythic you want to be opening, but, uh, but yeah, still for exciting. Worth, actually, for what it's worth, if you're in the Surveil deck, if you're in the high toughness, sure. slow, grindy, my this three mana spell will let me rebuy your best removal spell. This sure. three mana spell will let re, me rebuy your best pump spell. Yeah. Um, you know that to me is yeah, on turn nine if you cast mnemonic betrayal and use a you know cast one of their three mana creatures and cast one of their three mana spells like that's fine. Right. That to me says that there is power in this card, but you've sure. got to get to the late game. Yeah. This is not an early game card. Never. I don't think it's supposed to be. Um, but it's really interesting in vintage because everything's broken. And it's really fun, I think, in Limited because you're just trying to sort of grind it out. So in Sealed, I think this is very good. This yeah. is definitely playable. In Draft, mm, mm, we'll see how slow and or we'll fast see, the format right, is. Exactly. Up. If you have a super slow format and or the Surveil that can slow the format down to where you have seven mana, eight mana, right. this thing becomes super good. Because remember, it's it's any card, right? It's literally anything. Any yeah. of their creatures. Any of their so you can make your land drop from their graveyard after they've surveilled 
then play their spell, then play their creature. Exactly. Well, you can't play lands. Oh, I can't play lands? No, you may cast those cards. Oh, I can cast. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. never mind. Then. Fair and enough. Even Lotus though... Moxen. Sure. Yeah. Still, again, there, there are. I think there are options. This card seems really cool. I don't think this thing is busted. I don't think it's going to be $50 or whatever. Right. But I think it's really interesting. And I think that I appreciate that they ended on this mythic and yeah. not... And foils oh, will be expensive. Oh, foils will be uh, uh, sought after because yeah. that's how the older formats work. And if you have seen the latest Magic Arena trailer, they showed the animation that happens when you play this card. Oh. And it is sweet. Yeah. Cool. With the big skull. Oh Love my it. god, it's great. And like the, the dagger comes down, the things are all flying out. It's fan-freaking-tastic. Nice. That happens to me when I'm playing Vintage. There you go. Night Veil Predator is next. It's two black, two blue. All right, this card gets my nomination for uh, one of the things I like to see on our shows. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Why does this have all of these abilities? <laughs> two black, two blue, three, three, uncommon vampire with flying, death touch, and hex proof. Um, Good luck getting rid of it. So there was a card in original Return to Ravnica, which is weird to say. Mm -hmm. Middle Ravnica. Mid Rav. Mid, mid, mid sized sedan. Um, <laughs> called Ascendant Law Mage. I remember. It's two colorless white blue for a 3 2 flying hexproof. Uh, that card was an offensive card in mm -hmm. Limited. It dominated every game in which it saw play because it had hexproof and it had evasion. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult to get rid of and it won games by itself in two color and more control decks. Night Veil Predator is slightly less offensive because the casting cost doesn't include colorless mana in it. However, Still pretty difficult to deal with. 3-3 three, three is going to typically rule the skies. Death Touch is definitely going to make your opponent's flyers unable to attack. And Hexproof is just the world's biggest headache. Um, Welcome to Night Veil is definitely a really good card. <laughs> Wizards just keeps doing this thing where they say something like, you know, Hexproof's bad. Hexproof's really annoying. You know what? We're just gonna we're gonna put the brakes yeah. on, and then they and just... also the other thing they say is you know hexproof should go on big green creatures. Mm -hmm. Blue probably shouldn't have hexproof. Right. It's just like what are you doing? Why do they keep doing this? Why? Yeah. Why? You keep telling us you don't want to do this hexproof stuff, and then you do the hexproof yeah. stuff. Yep. For the Dominaria set review, we talked about giving green hexproof and giving blue shroud. Yeah. Right. This would be significantly less offensive if it was just shroud. Oh sure. And it would still be powerful. And be still be great. Right. But like the fact that it's going to kill whatever is going to block it, and the idea if you have any pump spell or removal spell, bounce spell for their blocker, doesn't e equipment, matter. Equipment, aura, doesn't matter. Oh my god. This is a card that could cause a lot of headaches. Notion Rain is Notion next. Notion Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Another early 2000s reference. Oh, yes. Early memes. Yes. In the gentlemen. cold notion rain. That's right. Um, black, blue, and generic mana for a common sorcery. Surveil two, then draw two cards, then notion rain deals two damage to you. This card is terrific. It's like read the bones. Yeah. You know? read, it, yeah. It, it, is, it is read the bones. Yeah. And, yeah it's and read the bones basically with upside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, there's only so many ways we can say it that surveil is so much better than scrying, but it really, really is. Yeah. Uh, it goes along with everything you want to do. Uh, it draws you cards, it filters through it. I saw this in play all over the pre pre release, all over worlds. Surveil and hit an arc at me, but whoop! <laughs> you absolutely can. From, so, from what I understand, Wizards of the Coast is in the middle of this experiment where they're deciding whether they want black to deal damage to yourself or do they want it to pay life. Because Read the Bones is pay life, yeah. Notion Rain deals damage. And right. there's little corner cases, scenarios where it's relevant, circle of protection black. I heard that they were in the process of like phasing out life loss because it was just too confusing. Sure. Yeah. And everything deals damage to you instead. Yeah, right. Which is fine. I can understand. I realize that. I should have gone with the Prince reference with Notion Rain. I wanna be you facing in the notion rain. Notion, notion rain, rain, notion rain. rain. Alright. We're dorks. Alright, Thief of Sanity is next. It's a black, a blue, and a generic mana for a rare 2 2 Spectre with flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top three cards of that player's library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest into the graveyard. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. This is Night Veil Spectre yep. 2.0, bigger, longer, and uncut. Well, smaller and harder to cast. Mm, harder to cast? Colorless blue black is significantly harder to cast than three hybrid than mana. Three hybrid mana. You that's... can't play this in either of the do, uh, um, mono blue devotion or mono decks, black decks. Yeah. That's fair. Which is the two two of the three decks that it's all play in, other than the Esper. But the upgrade, 
the upgrade is that right? you're exile on the card now, and for the rest of the game, whether or not this card lives, dies, or does anything else, yep. you can now cast that card. Can't forever. play lands though. Resident can't Hill. play I lands. Can't play lands. And it does put two cards into your opponent's graveyard, mm -hmm. which is relevant for something. Right. Um, but Nightmare of Spectre also card is you, great. You had to cast it immediately. You had to play that card immediately. Yeah. Right. This is you can keep it out there for the rest of the game. What is happening in this art? And it's writing something. I think it's writing a skull beast. Uh huh. That's a... Igor Kier, like one another one is artists. We talk about how often yeah. we we talked about how Step McKinnon does creepy very well. Igor is another one. Who just yeah. if you want creepy, he's yeah. Your guy. And Igor, uh, if if I recall correctly, Igor is the one that just dives in whole hog and is just like lets his freak flag fly yeah. with all of his <laughs> arts. And it's just like oh, we'll just have this this sp specter just have a skull, just an exposed, just open to the midday sun. Right. That really kind of, you know, brooding, like, light from the bottom, yeah. from the city kind of behind. reminds me of one of the specters from, like, you know, the when you, when you see, like, a, the grudge movie, sort of the white, the that, long yeah. black hair. Right, you know? right. Yeah, this, but this card, ultimately, uh, in limited, is amazing. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's, it's got evasion. It can still possibly their best card. You can play any, any mana for it. Whereas, whereas uh, with Nightmare Spectre, you had to play the exact mana cost. You had to have, like, you had to get their lands right. to play it so you can play that stuff. But again, if we're comparing this to Night Vale Spectre in somewhat of a favorable light, it's pretty darn good. Yeah, Night Vale Spectre basically ran the format along with some other black cards uh, and uh, and even blue cards. And some other blue cards. The yeah. mono blue deck. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this card is good. Great, easy early pick, if not first pick. Yeah. Because I'm not exactly sure how great this is going to be, but it feels pretty great. Mm -hmm. Thought Erasure is next. It is a black and a blue for an uncommon sorcery. Target opponent reveals the hand. You choose a non-line card from it. They discard that card and you surveil one. Seems fine. I mean, this Great. is essentially a removal spell in Limited if you're able to play it on turn two. Right. Uh, surveilling is always going to be relevant, of course. Just a good card. I mean, yeah. I mean, Duress is limited in the things it can pull, you know, and so this kind of gets around that for one more mana, and you also kind of feel your own graveyard at that. I like it. Coercion effects traditionally are playable in sideboards at three mana and main deckable in Limited at two mana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like Transgress the Mind was very good in Limited. Uh, saw a little bit of play in standard as well, like we talked about with disdainful stroke. That's mostly because uh, the meta warranted the it. The meta yeah. warranted it, and you could take things like thought knots here and whatnot. Um, but thought erasure cer certainly uh, um, something to keep in mind, especially going forward in standard. See, thought erasure something to keep in mind. It's truly the highest honor, isn't it, to be remembered? Pity for you. Wow! Wow! Br brutal. Unmoored ego. You gotta. You gotta make the face. Oh, we're going this way. Because that's the face you make yeah. when you name a Tron land. <laughs> Black, blue, and a generic mana for a rare sorcery. You choose a card name. Note, card name, even basic lands, ladies and gentlemen. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand in this way. It's just, it's just beautiful. I love the idea that you can get basic lands. It just cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Lost legacies rotating out with standard, and so if God forbid, there's just the one card that you need to be able to deal with, that, and, and you know, if there's a combo piece or something indestructible or whatever. This is a really great way to sort of replace that. And these are, this is another style of card that I think should sort of just kind of be evergreen. We've talked about how duress and pithing needle and oblivion ring should kind of be in every set. I like just kind of having an answer like this yeah. to. Too impossible to deal with things. This is uh, also uh, up yours, Tron mm -hmm. dot set. Um, Unmoored Ego being the first, it seems, I think, of the cards that are really not what we want. Uh, not not we would we don't want Tron running the format anymore in modern. Um, potential option there, a little expensive for the decks that would be blue black, I think, because that's mostly the Death Shadow and the Delver style. Maybe there's a Grixis Control deck that's interested in Unmoored Ego. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely a good stopgap solution to have as an option in standard as well. Right. This is one of those, I, I want the cranial extractions, you know, yeah. uh, of the world to be in standard just in case. This just is, in case. This is a safety valve. This is something went stupid. Right. Oh, God, what do we do? Well, we, we can Unmoored Ego it. That's cool. Right. We can stop that. Up next is Whisper Agent, and we have a very special guest to tell us about. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Magic Mics. I'm your host, The Professor, as always, and I'm joined this week, like every week, by my co-hosts, the man so tasty they named a sandwich after him, Mr. Ruben Bressler, and the queen of Cabal, the original Except No Imitations, Aaron Campbell. So, we're going to start right out with Gather the Townsfolk, and mm-hmm, what... I'm not replacing Irwin as host? What am I doing here then? Set review? <laughs> 
So the card I want to talk about is a card for Popper, Dull Surprise, and that card is Whisper Agent. It costs two hybrid mana of black or blue and one mana of any color for a 3-2 flash with Surveil 1. And this is at common. This is a really, really interesting card. Unfortunately, as of now, I don't think there's a clear home for it in Popper, but I think a lot of experimentation is going to go on. Actually, Guilds of Ravnica is is not a set that offered Popper too much. And while we now can build eight rat with the Burglar Rats, I think that the most likely card from this set that's going to see play in the Popper format is, of course, Whisper Agent. Why? The first thing that jumps out at me is how superior this card is to Hired Blade. 3-2 is nice because it'll still punch through Augur of Bolas. Surveil can feed our graveyard if we're in a Delve deck, which is very common in black. And is also common in black, just straight up mono black control looking for devotion. This has got two black mana, which is great. But what really excites me about this card is not its potential to replace anything in an established deck. Maybe it'll find a home in something like Mono Black Control. Possibly not, but I do think that with future cards entering Popper, this is going to be one of the first ones to stand out. This card is special at the common level. There is definitely going to be a home for it in Popper, even if that home is not yet established. And hey, at the end of the day, I might just want to play with this in Tortured Existence. Very nice. Thank you so very much to the professor Thank you. for hanging out and uh, being a part of the set review. That was great. Thank you so very much. Uh, Whisper Agent in and of itself is a terrific card. It's awesome to see the Popper applications that it does have. It's got uh, pips, as Pippin ain't easy, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to fuel all that good Gurmog stuff, which uh, clearly is the best zombie of all time, as I am mm. super wrong with wrong sauce. That was kind of like carrying fear. Uh, the, the card in of itself, though, I think is very playable. I saw it in play over the, the past weekend at Worlds. Uh, you know, th this is a card you're, you're, you can main deck. Again, you're surveilling. Mm -hmm. You're surveilling at instant speed, like we talked about with the black blue creature that you can, you know, instantly turn on surveil, which was huge. Um, there's a lot of upside of this card. Hired Blade, this is not. Yeah. You know, Hired Blade, I'd often wouldn't even play, but this card is definitely worth it. I'm a big fan of Whispering. <laughs> I think that this card's very good and could see a lot of play. I don't actually know if any of the audio of this is getting picked up right now, but really good in the mono black control uh, list in Popper. And if de if de uh, right. devotion comes back later, if Sapphires happens to be a thing, this is definitely going to be a card in that set as well. We're grown men. All right. Then <laughs> that is our last. Sipowitz. <laughs> <laughs> that was our last card in blue and Demir. Uh, Probably should have been whispering for the whole Demir segment because they're no, more about the hidden no, no. no. That, right. that oh. gag was perfect where the gag fit. Right. And thank you guys so much for hanging out here. All of our special guests thank going you. through every single card of Guilds of Ravnica. We will be back soon with all of the black cards, I believe. Black and Golgari. Black and Golgari. Ooh, it's that's the Eric exciting. Campbell special version of the show next. <laughs> Coming up soon, just for you. <laughs> All right, until next time, everybody. I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Aaron Campbell. And I'm Ruben Bressler. We're tapping the cards, so you don't have to. No, you don't.